Welcome out, gamers and gamettes, to Fireside Cast, where we're bringing you the RGL Season 17 Invite Highlander Bracket Reset between Witness Gaming and Run It Back. This is the end of the line. All of Season 17's led up to this. Both of these two teams have taken a game off of each other so far in playoffs, and we're now three maps away from the end of the season. I am Alto, joined by Zag to my side, Dr. Underscore behind the camera. Zag, how you doing tonight? You all right? Stayed up all day to watch the eclipse. I was not going to reset my sleep schedule for that one. So wait, can I get a, can I get a replay on that on what you just said? Stayed up all day. Yeah. Nice. Congratulations. <laughs> all night and all day. <laughs> Something twenty four hours. There you but, go. <laughs> yeah, ready, ready for the grand finals bracket reset. Though I think we got pretty solid map draft coming through from both teams i'm pretty excited for what we're gonna see here tonight and yeah the season comes to an end it's been a long season it's been a competitive season an exciting one and hopefully the grand finals the bracket reset lives up to it yep as uh you mentioned the map so let's go right into that so the pick ban that we have between these two teams is that rib band product witness band vigil witness picked ash uh, Rib picked Swift, Rib banned Prude, and then Witness picked Upward. So, I think the beginning of this, Zag, is very, very kind of standard. Exactly yeah. what we'd expect. Rib got blasted on product last week. You gotta ban that. And Witness has been banning Vigil ever since they lost on an over bracket finals. I think Witness picking Ash is a little bit interesting over them picking Prude. Yeah, just shows that they are more familiar with Asheville. They, they probably feel confident no matter which map they would end find themselves on, but they probably just felt that Asheville was a bit more probably standard to what they're used to playing. Prude, we did see, you know, two rounds go the way of run it back last week, and, you know, maybe more could have gone over if things have been slightly different, but probably it's going to take the safer call option for them. Swiftwater for Rib, no surprise. They are 2 0 against a witness on Swiftwater this season, so going to hopefully keep that one two going, get one. their map. Right, because they lost regular season, oh, yeah. but yeah, kind of come around in playoffs. Yeah, either way, that's definitely running back's best map against Witness, so no surprise there. Now, the last part of the pick ban was interesting. It could have been either a steel ban or a prude ban coming out of run it back. You know, steel, they were so bad on steel, they got accused of match fixing, and then on prude, they did end up losing that one last week. They decided to go with the ban you lost on, don't want to play it, and kind of told Witness to call our bluff that we don't want to play steel. Witness did not call the bluff. They picked Swift or they picked uh, upward as tiebreaker. I think that's safer. I think playing to a map that you perceive as stronger for you, rather than just trying to go for opponent's weakness and maybe falling into a trap card, makes sense. So I think it shook out interestingly, but it makes sense to me. And I think an upward third map on a bracket reset, and we haven't seen all playoffs, would be hype as hell. Agreed, because, yeah, it's it's been pretty much absent. That said, looking at this, I almost feel like Rib has a better chance here than they did last week. Uh, I, mean, I, I think Asheville, to me, is going to be a toss-up, because both of these two teams lost the score, yay, on this map pretty handily. And I, I think that, yes, it's a bad map for Rib, and I think that Witness is relatively better, but I just think Witness is product is so far above any other map that any other team has that anything other than that's going to be a better chance for them and i mean yeah i guess we have the benefit of hindsight right knowing that they lost on prude but i kind of we we both mentioned back in the upper record finals that rib was putting together some of the best stopwatch gameplay we've seen and not necessarily stopwatch just payload so i think giving them another payload maybe over steel i think gives them a decent shot if they get to map three yeah, I mentioned it as we were talking before the cast began, but Upward is probably the biggest wild card that could have been picked here, just because it's been so long since the teams have played it. Steel, we know they're both not good at it, so although we do have like kind of a rough estimate of where they would be in relation to each other, but Upward is unknown territory, and both these teams, if they do end up going to that Upward, I think is going to be super exciting for a tie-breaking map when we really have not seen that map at all since week one. Yeah, and what I think is interesting is that, assuming that, you know, both the two teams, if we get there, it's probably going to be both teams taking their picks. Mm. You know, as much as we see in Highlander two teams trading each other's map picks, given the history between these two teams, I don't feel like if Witness win Asheville, they're then going to lose Swift. I mean, you never know. But I feel like it will be Rib coming into the third map with the momentum coming off of that Swiftwater win. So that could really make it an interesting map three if they get there. But, you know, that's a very far away away, and we are on Asheville right now, so I think that's the map we should maybe look to talk about. 
Yeah, Asheville coming out first. Witness Gaming's pick. They're hoping they can take this one nice and easy and maybe roll into a 2-0. Uh, for them on Koth, again, we mentioned product, probably their strongest map in the pool, probably should be the most dominant team on that map. The loss to help in the first round of playoffs is an anomaly that cannot be explained by science. So after seeing what happened last week, the clean 4-0, it just gives confidence on Koth for this team. And I think, again, Asheville, very standard Koth at this point, probably a close second in terms of familiarity on Koth behind product. So Witness probably are confident on the map. They're, both teams did lose to Squirtgay. So, you know, again, we can compare them based on what we expect. And I, I just, just based on the way that, that the flow of playoffs has been going, I really just have to heavily favor Witness on the map, even if, you know, things could go differently more so than on product. Absolutely, yeah. And I think you look at when Squirt Ye played Witness on this map in lower bracket finals and managed to beat them, a lot of it was due to great performances from the, from Durr, I believe, was on Soldier, and really Scouty keeping Lenny down. Felt like was kind of the, the, the bedrock of their win on this map. And, you know, keeping Lenny down has not been an easy task throughout this, these playoffs, but we've seen that when it happens... Things tend to go well for the team playing against Witness. So there's going to be a lot of uh, focus for me on Poseidon right now to see if he can stop Lenny from, you know, kind of doing what he did on product and just dropping some absolutely insane numbers. Yeah, I mean, I guarantee you that's number one. That's step one in the game plan for Run It Back here on uh, Asheville, probably for the entire match. But yeah, on this Koth map, it is going to be super important to keep Lenny down. Uh, it's, it's so important that Poseidon gets going early because I feel like the SVS between these two has been so, I don't want to say volatile, but like it's so momentum based that whichever sniper is currently popping off will just win rounds for their team. And if Poseidon's able to get going early, I think it would be a massive boon to for, Winter, for Run It Back to actually make some rounds happen, maybe even get that upset. But we're about to go live here with the bracket reset. It's going to be Witness Gaming starting out on blue side, Run It Back on red. So, you know, my prediction overall for, for we'll start with Asheville. Uh, I'm leaning witness. I, I just feel like they're the hot team on Koth right now. So I'd give them probably 4 1 or 4 2. I'll go with a 4 1. Honestly, I'm just feeling them hot tonight. Yeah, that that is about where I'm kind of looking at. I think I'll go 4 2 just for a bit of uh, variety. But I could honestly see a 4 0 2 if things kind of start developing early like they did on product. But we are live. So. Last game of Season 17, coming right up, Rib versus Witness Gaming here on Asheville. Both demos coming to mid. Yep, both running out of shutter, trying to land that spam on each other. No one taking any damage yet. Early ball onto the Dome for Blank. Hits the Rocket Mid Air. Revolver going to clean up Mori. Instantly dead is the running back demo. Witness Gaming lining up. Lenny wins an early SVS. And even though Exile's dead, Frag's overwhelmingly in favor of Witness right now. Both teams have heals to work with, though, so we'll see what they can get going. Heavy walking up on this block is going to be huge for securing the point. And pretty, you know, calmly, it's going to be Witness Gaming taking mid. Yeah, I mean, Moray getting just kind of penciled there right out of the shutter. Unfortunate. Mid kind of ended there, even with XL going down. Wood is going to come take this first mid easily. Lenny going for a bit of an aggro scope on the box. It's forced back, but still decent positioning trying to look on to bats. Boxy did make it out, so a change likely to come soon. Yep, Spy going in the shutter, get the Dead Ringer pop. We're going to call it that Uber coming out. Scout Skybox by the Sticky Trap will be just out of there immediately. Mori gonna get the remainder of that flash. Look at that Foxy blasted outside of the shutter. Gonna get chased down by that Spy Scout duo taken down. But Blake gets sniped by Poseidon on the other side. So both medics gonna be down. It's a 5v5 popping off on the point with frags in favor of Witness. Gonna be even right now. Remember, spawns in favor of Run It Back as we just see Pyro running up on the point, trying to get some damage down. We'll get cleaned up by Pablo on that 3k. And Witness Gaming gonna maintain control for now. But look at this, Mori all alone. Some good pipe to keep himself alive. That's amazing. Without that one, he goes down. Yeah, I mean, I thought Leaf might have been able to win that with the pick that he got onto Lenny, but Witness Gaming players just coming in, putting up a strong defense. That said, they are fighting against the bad spawn timers, and Rib continually getting those faster spawns and are eventually just going to outnumber them on the point. Hyphen gets a glow stick with the Birdo. That's going to be about it. XL trying to fight off if that's not going to find anything. Fluoris actually, they're stalling it for a decent amount. They're getting a lot of time off this Lenny. Speaking from Shutter, not going to find anything as the cap finally goes over. Yep, shot in a headshot, eating two headshots. Lenny gonna clean up that defensive heavy, elongate his spawn to 18 seconds, and here's the soldier coming through. Rocket blocked for now, but Foxy trying to escape out through secret fish on the trail, but will get blocked by the engineer for now. Foxy out with 70%, but Cap gonna get flipped over back for witness as fast as they gave it up. 
Yeah, I mean, just able to flood back in. They got their players up all walked at one time, and that's only going to be a less than a 30-second cap for Rip. So a little bit of time off for them, but things still heavily in Witness's favor. Again, though, both teams have Uber, so the exchange likely to be coming shortly. Looks like they're leaning towards Shutter for it. Yep, Uber popped out. Yep, really early pop coming out of Run It Back right now. Wouldn't we're scanning me have a much later Uber. Rest of the player's gonna be herded back. Again, no one gonna be dead directly in exchanges, but look at this soldier going over the top. Blank doing some damage. Lenny, another SVS went onto Poseidon with Chalk dead. This offense, of course, has nothing going. Lenny dead as well. They will at least shut down onto Lenny, but it's not really going to be enough. They need more kills here. Melon going to walk forward, do some damage to the scout. Will end up going down for a trouble, but there's Blank coming back in behind. Kills onto Foxy and Mori. Blank has been a menace this round. Yep, really just been getting in and doing tons of work every time you see him jump. No, nothing really at all. I mean, the Uber got popped out really early. I think Rib was just trying to cycle those Ubers, but they really didn't have any plan in the post. Blank was able to just pop off, though. Lenny already top scoring in the server. Poseidon again, having lost multiple SVSs. Mako going to try to get some space on the ramp and goes down. But it looks like uh, Blake is playing really far back. But even then, no med, no problem. Everyone on <laughs> Rib walking up just going to get mulched on point. Lenny continuing to get frags here. Yeah, this round's not even really going to be close as Blake now up on 100% Uber. Foxy only on 40%. Run it back, have really no room in this round to maneuver. They're just going to have to get all their players, drop off fans, try to make a miracle. But Blake's just going to press that right click button, walk onto the point with his team. Jay Z dead immediately, so no medic drop going to be available. Leaf dead as well. This one's just a formality. Yep, I mean, not even two, not even 30 seconds off the clock for Rib. They got that one cap, and it took them losing a number of players just to. Uh... Finally get on that point. Witness coming out really strong here in Asheville. I mean, it's their pick. So I don't know if uh, I don't know if there's any alarm bells really right now, but definitely good to see if you're a Witness Gaming fan. I think for a rib, you'd hope that you'd be contesting a bit more than, you know, just 24 seconds off the clock. So hopefully this goes a bit better for them. Remember, we've seen them be actually decent at mid-fights. So maybe if Mako, if uh, more insta-gib, it may go a bit better. But Foxy oh, insta-gibs! <laughs> Blake finds the crossbow onto his medic opposition, just taking down those heals immediately. It's going to be a couple players trying to sack forward, but they're really finding nothing. And yeah, I've heard of medics getting sniped out of shutter, but never crossbowed out of shutter. Yeah, that's some some medic on medic violence right there. But that's one way to win the mid for, as a uh, med for your team. And Lenny, oh, jumping up onto the box, going for the dominating. Shot, already doming Poseidon just into the second mid fight. We mentioned that. You know, Lenny getting shut down is really the first thing you have to do if you want to take games off of Witness and nowhere that shut down, nowhere in sight. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he has one death, maybe two total in the game so far. Now going to be standing up on fans with the overheal. Poseidon on the opposite side needs to find a headshot into this sniper, give his team something to work with here. They're going to sack in, try to get the super force out of Blake. What a reflect oh, oh. from Melon destroys both of them on the entry. Yeah, massive, massive deny right there. Not even close. I mean, Blake was already far gone. They weren't getting that sack regardless, but just even more demoralizing that Witness is really not giving Rib any openings in at all. Yeah, it really has been zero openings. So now with Uber, Foxy going to charge that up. They're building pretty slowly, honestly. Need some more players getting crit heals their way. But early pick onto the Engineer. Not going to be that big, but they're just going to have to go anyway. They're bleeding time already a minute off that clock. Shutter going to open. Uber popped out onto Mori. They don't like it. It's going to hold S back up in that shutter. Normal Uber exchange. Nothing exciting happening. I mean, cycling Ubers is fine if you have some kind of ad to go off of or post. Oh, that's another shot. They're going to walk. Yep, Chalk actually walking off of Ram. Going to find him. But Jay-Z and Birdo answer right back onto numbers in favor of Witness. A lot of space for Mori, but Lenny on pass. Heavy. Down. That's likely going to have to just abort the push. But Chalk actually up on the box, getting a lot of oh, ground no. in. But Lenny now peeking out of shutter. Gonna find Foxy instead, continually taking down this combo one piece at a time. It's enough actually that they're gonna be able to get the cap in. They're gonna wait likely for uh, Foxy to spawn up. They're already up before they get it in, but already a minute and a half off the clock. And they took them a long time to get that cap through, giving Witness time to regroup. Yeah, things would have been not the worst if Foxy just didn't get sniped by Lenny on the exit there. Now Blake up 50% Uber ad gonna be perfectly fine for Witness Gaming. Just gonna charge the rest of this up, walk up onto the point, spy about to dead ringer across the point. Gonna be giving those comms away. And now 85% for Blake. It's gonna have to be like a solid kite followed by a repush from run it back if they wanna make up this time deficit. They can't just keep trading the point back and forth with Uber Leap Frog. They need to make a play at some point. And with 30 seconds, they've now gotten their previous high, but Lenny winning the SPS on the Poseidon again. 
just means that post is gonna have to go into the favor of no, but I'm like how can you and then he's just here headshotting your double man immediately there's no chance to fight post he will go down oh, to shot flanking yep. underneath so that's something they're gonna get two onto blank and lenny so players though i mean you've got a meta and a pyro and shutter yeah trying to contest five people on point that's not gonna end well i mean thankfully leaf at least survives and will uh get fish's dead ringer but buddy just absolutely tearing up this match already yeah Silver lining Foxy with 100% Uber. They need to make a play. Lenny did go down, so not going to be posted up quite yet. We'll now get up to bats. Any big picks would be huge onto this entry and run it back squad. Blake on 70%, so they're likely just going to stall as long as they can. Jump into the shutter. Trying to get some damage down is Mori, but not quite going to quite find anything, really. Almost no damage being dealt to Witness Gaming in that. And their Uber's just over, and here comes the recontest. Yeah, I mean, even if they get this cap, Blake's just about to have. They're losing this lead from hard. They go getting hit. A lot of damage. Foxy super low on the back of ramp. Jay-Z gonna find the kill into Lenny as the Uber comes in. out, but this chase into lobby might find a lot. No, Leaf sitting in the doorway to make sure his med stays alive, but Mori and Chalk both dead. Cap never went over in the first place. So, Foxy, slight ad, but I don't even... They're just barely gonna have time to get it by the end of this round. Yeah, the, you, you can't keep playing the Leapfrog game if you are running back here. At some point, someone has to stay alive and make a play as nice and early. First pause of the night, of course. What's interesting is that there are 30 seconds left for Witness here, but if they cap, we'll be at a halftime, so that means the round is still going to be going. Yeah, the round's still on, huh? So clearly, oh, no, just uh, a brief small, pause right someone's there. Someone's probably lagging oh. or something. Yep. Oh, wait, what? Wait, a what? Re they just re-exec. They re-exec, but a two went onto the scoreboard. What happened? Was that a server lag? I... Yeah, we're hearing there might have been something wrong with an SDV delay, maybe. We'll, uh, we'll let you know more as it comes through. I mean, that was really looking like a 2-0 for Witness Gaming. So yeah. it wouldn't surprise me if the teams just said, all right, there's your 2-0. No one's saying anything in chat that would make us think that something went wrong at the time. So not sure at the moment. Oh, okay. I heard from... Uh, apparently what happened was they started the second half, I think, and then right as they started, yep, and we're seeing that right now, uh, someone crashed, so they re-exact, not realizing that... They would uh, stop the STV. They would stop the STV. So, okay, okay so nothing nothing too funky happening. It was a 2-0 for Witness Gaming. Um, <laughs> and we move now into the first half. <laughs> yeah, first half time, and... Honestly, like, yeah, we didn't see the end of that round, but let's be honest, that was always going to be a Witness Gaming win. Run it back, got behind early, was forced onto negative leap frogs, never made a play. That's just what happens. You bleed out the Koth round. So now down 0-2. Not surprised at all. Lenny has been uninhibited. Nothing has been stopping him at all from running rampant. And if you all run it back, I I don't... You asked me, like, so half seriously, half sarcastic in a previous cast, you know, do I, do I think they should just forfeit a map too when they're doing this poorly to get it over with? At, at this point, I, I really need to see something kind of run it back here. I, I'd argue this time the theoretical forfeit for mental is better since there is no Koth map going to be coming up after this. This is the one Koth. If run it back is just thinking, let's get it out of the way, I can't really fault them too heavily, but like, at least try to warm up into the game a little bit, you know? Well, here's why, if I'm that, if I'm, if I'm Rib, I, I think last time was different because the, the product was just like, they were getting stepped on. It was, it was gross how hard they were getting rolled. This time, it doesn't feel to me like Witness, yes, Lenny's doing a lot, but I mean, do we have logs? I can try to pull them. But I don't feel like Lenny's dropping 600 DPM here. Maybe 400, but not 600. And I feel like Rib's pushes are just not very well put together. There's they're, they're consistently just popping out of Shutter in a full 9v9. They're not getting any... They're not clearing roof. They're not getting their sniper set up on ramp. You know, they're not... It, it feels like, you know, there's a checklist that a lot of teams, you know, really once you get into main level, kind of know, you know, you send your sniper ramp, get him set up, 
go bats, clear roof, drop down, take the Uber in. And I'm not seeing that from Rib. And I mean, maybe they maybe they don't really care. Can't blame them if they think this is kind of a this map is just a formality, but not the best look from them so far. I mean, Lenny, fourteen and five, five hundred DPM. That's pretty tough to beat, but. Still. Yeah, it's hard to play when the enemy scout demo sniper is topping the charts, right? Just doing tons of work. I think that so, something I noticed, obviously, like partially this is because they're playing against an oppressive core right now that's shutting them down, but run it back. I've seen Chalk go across the map once. I've seen a soldier bomb passed a couple times. Other than that, in the spy, I don't think I've ever seen anyone cross the point. Leaf got in once. He debt jumped over and killed Lenny. And actually help them get the cap the one time they did in that first round. But we are live here in round two. So more focus on Lenny. Going to have to be prior one. Again. Going to push into his Mako in early though. Going to eat the lock and load. And Poseidon opening up onto Blake. Exile next. Oh my god. Blake going to go down. Whatever happened at the half. It's working for Rivet. Poseidon wins an SVS. Chalk finding himself a third one. Poseidon with four. Turn off the nameplates. <laughs> yeah. Turn off the nameplates. Whose team is this? Teams just swapped. I mean Blake. No, no, that Blake died so early, he spent six seconds in spawn alone, waiting for that next wave. Wait for someone to so, spawn up with him. What? And look at this forward hold on Bath. This is a completely different Rib. Literally switch the nameplates. Rib has done a complete 180. They are playing with uninhibited un un aggression right now, running up to the enemy Bats. They're going to distract a bit, bomb back to point with a couple players, get the mini sentry, get the heavy set up on the opposing sides of the map, and now they're playing aggressive. They're playing with some, some uh, forward pressure here. Trying to see what they can do. Blake's still only on 65% Uber to Fox's 100, so we might see a sack play. Here comes a soldier. Good reflect, but only kites him further. Will be a bomb from Exile that gets the force on. And that's a good bomb by the demo man, able to get that last stick he needed to get that Uber out. Yep, yeah, Lenny's still up on bats too, getting protected, gonna find picks on to if I pick onto Mori, so they get the force out. I mean, Blake though still not even having. It's gonna be a big add once he gets almost 80%, but there's already a minute in favor of Rib. Hard to say that you could hard to ask for a start any better than this. Yeah, so now we'll see what they can do. Add an Uber Dissad. Kite has to be out here from Foxy in just a little bit. Blank gonna take that roof, force the players off of it. They do need to force the Uber out of Blank though. You can't just walk away for free. You gotta do something. Blank put down back to the floor. We'll get an arrow to save his life for now. Rebombing like three times or something. Just has not gotten down and no pressure on Witness has actually made them force here. Mako gonna get taken out in the back line. Point getting edged a bit further. Chalk knows. He wants to get forward. Make them use Uber. They will get melee and Lenny gets sniped too. When, when is Witness going to decide to go? The answer is now. Going to go onto Foxy. Foxy trying to dodge. Will get out of there. X on the able to land the sticky. He's now 95%. Do they just repush immediately with these numbers? I think you do. Yeah, they're coming right out of Shutter. And here's where the Shutter Uber works. Blake's Blake, caught. He's dead. Flying into the team and he's going to knock Blake over. Murray. That is a nuke with the lock and load. It was the star of last week's match. And it's coming up again. That's a 3k for Mori. A med pick for Poseidon who's currently rocking a 7k. He's at 14 points. Lenny only at 2 so, I mean, we asked for more control on Lenny. We are getting it. Poseidon going Super Saiyan right here in the second half. And, I mean, Rib, if they keep playing like this, you know, they're looking at even this match right back up. Yeah, I mean, I, I can't say it enough. Literally switch the name tags. It feels like Rib are just playing so aggressive right now. Like, they own the map. Oh, they will lose a couple key players. Man. Yeah. But they do get exiled, though. Without the Demo Man, it's really easy for Mori to control their walkout here. They got Flu as well. Good pick by Jay-Z there. Number is going to be even down. With Blank Finds dead, there's blank. no bomb no threat. Soldier. Oh, look at that. Stab. Fish goes in. Gets the stab onto Poseidon with Mori getting headshot. Foxy's in a 1v1 with Fish. Surf's out. We'll get to Repair just in oh. time. Wanted to yep. see. Wanted to Blake see. Blake is uh... 19. How do you get solo? Yeah. <laughs> Must have. jay -Z had been in for a while behind. He may have come yeah. in tried to do something. That's my guess. I was watching the, Lenny, the 1v1. Yep. But yep, Lenny. Aggro in. Shutter finds the pick onto Leaf. Gonna rotate onto the boxes now. Looking up onto Bats. Mori taking the safe Foxy way ball. around. Foxy wants to go for the pack. Lenny's seeing this. Oh, didn't quite get the shot. But now both teams have Uber here. Exchange likely to come out pretty quickly. I just, I, you just can't go right out of shutter here. They are more levitated by the Wrangler. Yeah, of course. I mean, that's what a round uh, first half rib Uber looked like. We'll have to see if they can get some momentum off it. But last time this has been happening, they wouldn't get anything else. Here's a bomb from the soldier trying to get some work in. Mako floated into the skybox, taken down. They're going to get close onto Blake, but good heavy pressure coming forward from Flu. And Pablo with the cleanup, able to just get the kills. Lenny getting the medic for good measure. And... Yeah, that's kind of what happened all first half when they just, you know, got nothing out of the Uber and tried walking out of Shutter. It's just not how you're going to get pressure. I want to note the ad Uber they took 
where they killed Blake and, you know, Mori got the 3k with the, the lock and load. It was great going out of Shutter because they already had point. Everyone on the group stuff, it was add. That Uber does not work in an even situation when they know it's coming. It's all they've done. They're going to find Blake, but, I mean, Pablo respawns. They already have really good point presence right here. They were winning because of good plays from Poseidon, but Mako coming in just lands on Blake's head. But that said, Chalk and Mako both going down. Poseidon winning the SVS, however, likely going to be the determining factor here. No sniper means they can just walk off blue on the well, spot and what he can. They'll find Mori. Yeah, B Blank poked into lobby. It's just exile and flew out here. Blank in a wrap around. One HP on Foxy. The flare. The pipe. Oh! The lock and load across the entire map gets the fade away onto Foxy, trying to leap through Shutter. Now Rib in damage control mode. Need to see whatever they can do. And they really have nothing left. That exile fade away just changed the entire flow of the map. Yeah, that that weapon needs to get looked at next season, Zag. I'm gonna say that that pipe went so far. Literally Shutter to Shutter. Uh, it went like slow motion. And like in my head and you know you had the uh the the what's the the olympic song chariots of fire playing <laughs> as it sails into foxy and yeah that's what looked like a dominant round for rib suddenly now they're gonna find themselves on the back foot mako pistol down trying to get in and the glow stick finds jay easy already 7v9 but the time is forcing them to get bored right now pablo still sitting on uh, it's, it's goes bad. down and yeah, this is a 6v9, unless you get a sniper pick right away. Lock and load! And nope, Lenny finds Poseidon, Leaf gonna be next, and it is our academic for Witness holding on to this. They're gonna get forced back 10 seconds, Foxy only at 75, but Blake has. Looks like this may be a 3-0. Yeah, right click onto the point, Air Blast coming out onto Mako, no one else is gonna really be able to touch meaningfully. And yeah, that one gonna be the 3-0 for Witness Gaming after such a promising start. They had a two-minute lead run it back did, and just not able to capitalize. We saw them do one of their weak shutter, even Uber exchanges, then re-push out. That got them nothing in the first half. Like the, the aggression they were playing with it just it fizzled out, and it feels like they really just have no idea to play if they don't win the mid and are immediately spawn camping. The picks they got were because they were getting sniper picks, not necessarily because they were changing their core gameplay, and when the snipe, when you do that, unless if your sniper stops performing, which well, is what did, that said though, it's all they really need right now. They're gonna get a ton of picks, Jay Easy finds two. Looks like Blake is going to escape this time. He's already back at spawn. But otherwise, another strong mid right here coming out of Rib. Just need to see them kind of carry it through the rest of the round. I, I don't have an issue with what they do from here where they like play forward they can play on point they'd get pressure the issue is if they ever get pushed off of the point and back into their lobby i have no faith in them being able to repush so i want to see how long how much time they can kind of get off the clock just holding on the point at even uber because remember blake didn't die this time so we'll be at a slight deficit because he didn't have as many targets to charge on but we'll have that uber shortly fish gonna get taken down in the meantime though so no spy comms available for witness they have lenny on the bats looking for an opening but poseidon not gonna take it not even gonna bother peeking it so we're just gonna be the wait on uber for witness here as they walk up to the shutter yep an exchange gonna come out right here pop right onto chalk he's in position to do damage in this post lenny getting flashed in shutter for a potential svs and now Chalk's gonna have to pull out the gloves. Poseidon finds the shot onto Blake, though. Blake dead as well. Leaving a tree bug pipe. But the momentum should be in favor of Rid. But that said, they're gonna be forced back. No heals, no problem for Witness Gaming right now. They just work too much on the back foot. So they're gonna try to reach the shutter. But Mori getting forced back. Yeah, Mako tries to jump up, get some damage done, but she's gonna burn out with Gigi going down as well. They really have nothing left to contest on this mid. They will at least have a 30% add that comes from Foxy, you know, getting out and starting to charge again, whereas Blake did get sniped at the start of that at start of the post. So if Run It Back are able to kind of play with this add and make it so they're not at an even Uber situation, things look a lot better for them because they have been useless in even Uber from this position. Agreed, yeah, but this time we see do you see Mori on bats going for some spam over. They need to go fast, they know they have this clear. Yep, they're going to drop down this time, not just popping out of Shutter. I like this. That said, Foxy peeking wide with only 90%. Oh, Fish, Fish on the point. Fish coming in. Ooh, Can't get the oh, oh, away. <laughs> Unfortunate for him, but good air blast from Melon. We'll get them back. Blake getting chased down. If they can get Blake, it'd be huge, but Blake just going to surf that damage that back. Going to dodge the lock and load. load yeah, the lock and load pipe. Him. You never know how oh, much it's going to do, but they have Uber. They're going to go back in immediately. Blank gonna get jumped up, up to the top, will get some good damage on these rockets, but no big kills coming in, they find the slow heavy, but that's really about it, and run it back, they didn't get the cap, but they might be able to come back out here. Yeah, they chased out Blake, which is fine, but they needed cappers behind it so that they could at least get the point, get some time back, but instead Witness find themselves in the timely right now, leave caught out. Look at XL, XL playing up on fans! 
He almost kills Foxy. Foxy has to surf all the way back to get the Sandwich. Melon and Blank will go down, though, so they got a bit too aggressive, lost some players, but they will at least get the time lead out of that. Blake now on 60%, Foxy on 70 so it's going to be a cat for running back as Witness Gaming have to wait for some spawns to refight, but they're going to be eager to do so. They're already lining up. Yeah, they do get this cat back in, but Exile already spamming. Great rocket from Mako. Exile surfs all the way up. Pablo going to be going down as Mako Safe surfs chalk. out at full. And nope, yeah, Chalk just baited up on the boxes. No one else helping him as he loses the 1v1 2 flu with some help from other players Uber. on Witness. Yeah, yeah popped, popped out. out here. Lots of players flying around. Blake surfs out too. He ends up on bats in this post, but that's just a cycle. Rib should maintain control over this if, they don't, if they're not going to miss Chalk too much. Well, they are. They're going to because they have this long spawn timer on the heavy the teleporter is up so he likely he can get back to the front lines sooner rather than later but they're already getting pressure from all angles losing an svs now they will get three kills though including one onto lenny jay-z finding his man there so now able to hold out onto the point is mori chalk and the reinforcements are here from spawn so able to maintain control of the point and with another uber ad run it back in another good position to maybe take around here yeah, I mean, that was a really big stab by Jay Easy there just to make sure that there are no snipers on the board. Helps them keep that state where they're on it. Mori getting hit really low, backing up to get an arrow. Him going down would have been really bad. That help is awful right now. Rib. Yeah, as Fish just walking out. Catch on to Chalk. Getting bombed on ramp, but the glow stick going to take out Mako and Jay Easy. No touching Lenny, says Definitely. the entire defense squad on ramp. Chalk getting stabbed. They're gonna oh no, nice seven! You have to back out faster. If you're not going to fight, you can't hang around and shudder at 97. Foxy going to go down. Blake, full Uber at. Here comes the sack. They need to get this Uber Force, but not going to be successful on the sack. So now Witness Gaming, they're down, you know, 45 seconds, but I can't help but feel like they're favored in the round once again. Yeah, they're going to need a sack to come, a good sack to come in fast and get this Uber out of Blake. If they want to have a shot right now, Jay Easy looking across up through lower. No, they're not too far forward right now, and Blake's not yet in the shutter, but he's rotating there right now. Here you can't sack it, but oh, Mako going in, they're not going to find anything on this. Hyphen gets stabbed, but otherwise they're all just going down. Exile caught out, the lock finds another, and Flu hit up low on ramp, going to start eating Jay-Z with the gun, finds the heavy. They have decent picks here, but not the Uber. Foxy, they're coming up on 80, they should be able to take an exchange. Once they get Jay Easy behind, have to I would have loved to see him go for the teleporter. If he could have elongated the blue all respawn timer, it would have been huge. But instead, just gonna go for the medic. He's not gonna really find his man. We'll have to cloak back up. We'll be distracted from the server to come in. They will force the Uber. Jay Easy just gonna die. Not really doing anything in that decloak. The rest of the team trying to fight, but Uber gonna be ending later for witness. They ended on the point, and Poseidon dead again. Lenny on a 4K on fans. He's gonna win this round by himself. Yep. Yeah, making another on to Foxy finds that mid time and time again. They're forced back into shutter, but no cap time. Mori has to walk into a meat grinder, and he's looks like he's just gonna go lower. It's save his right now. No, man. Oh, chalk. Oh, good snake. Just that. Lenny. Stay on that. Maybe get some cap time. Mori coming up, gonna find Pablo. Blake gets taken down. This cat might actually come through. Yeah, and Foxy's back, and with Blake dead, they're gonna have charge advantage. It's actually a quick fix moment, by the way, if you're Blake. You have to come up on quick fix here. 30 seconds, mm, is he back up? I think he, I think he stays on Uber here. Uh, if it goes over time, yeah, maybe he gets it. We'll have to see. Lenny's on a 7K, by the way. They never took him down in that entire thing, and it nearly cost Run It Back greatly, so Run It Back, they have to hold this with their lives. There will be at least an Uber for advantage for them on the field, but they cannot bleed at all here. Poseidon needs to start posting up and getting some picks here. SVS face-off is going to be the biggest decider here. As XL going to drop off the fans. Let's do some damage. Poseidon's dead. So is Chalk. And mm -hmm. Foxy gets locked again. Lenny still rocking that 8k. Jay Easy finds two on the back line, matter. but it's not gonna be enough. Rib definitely coming alive at the end here, getting a double overtime, but it will be a 4 0 on Asheville for Witness Gaming. Yeah, uh, I don't know. Uh, I feel like. Run it back, yes, coming alive, but they were never consistent enough to take a round. At the end there, when they had numbers advantage, they knew they were at Uber ad, or rather no Ubers on the field. Why didn't they play forward and try to stuff a bit? You know, jump your explosive classes up to fans, have your heavy peek and shutter. You know, make slow them down. Don't let them walk off fans, get all their angles on you. Blow your heavy up immediately. It's, it's so hard to play, but yeah, that's going to be the 4-0. Four, oh. four witness gaming on Asheville. I can't say that wasn't expected. You know, I had a 4-1 for them. But the, the the manner in which that went down for run it back at the end as they were finally starting to get some momentum going kind of feels sad, but they're going to put that in the back of their minds. They have their best map coming up besides Vigil, that is. 
Yeah, agreed. I mean, I'm I'm, I'm glad they didn't forfeit, like <laughs> you know, we discussed, because <laughs> there was definitely some signs of life. There's some good things happening. Poseidon showed a little bit of life in that. Um, some good, really good kills from Jay Easy there too. I thought at the end, getting that he got a med and demo pick, and I mean, it doesn't matter when his team's white, but in a different situation, he may have been able to pull that out. Yeah, you just want to see your playmakers come alive and start making plays. And we did see Poseidon in that third round had, uh, you know, look like he was Lenny in that server for a little bit. So just getting some confidence going is really all running back want to do there. They probably knew they're going down 0-1 in the map, in the match. I expect they're going into swift water. So right now, this is their test. You know, they came in as one seeds in the first grand finals, couldn't close it out there. They find themselves down underdogs once again, needing to win every map to keep the season, you know, going and win. And... If, if a team is going to be, you know, championship caliber, this is where it has to start. You got to win your own map pick here. Otherwise, you know, it, it's just a witness gaming sweep again. Yeah, I mean, I'm concerned that it was much closer last time. Last Swift. But uh, I've got faith in Rib that they can pull this out. They've taken a ha- at least taken a half every time they put in this the third time. Fourth time these two teams will be playing on this map this season. So probably... The most you can play any team, I think, on any given map in a season. They played it in the regular season and then each of the three playoff matches. So, a lot of history, as we said in the lead-in. Rib up 2-1 on this. Granted, that was they did have Joe in that you know, 2-0 loss in the lower bracket, in the upper bracket finals. They had Fish in grand finals, though, where they still managed to lose the map 2-1. So, if Rib can win this, they can get themselves a map back push to upward complete wild card where they have the momentum so gotta hope that whatever kind of signs of life they were showing on those Asheville mids they can carry into swift if we're, <laughs> if we're gonna say the the spies directly correlate to the ending scores on swift water with the joe it's the 0-2 with fish it's the 1-2 with demento is it the 2-1 probably yeah yeah i mean we say it was these two rosters that played together last time and it was still 2-1 rib Yeah, logs up on your guys' screen if you want to take a look at them. Mori actually had a really good uh, back half there. 481 yeah. DPM. Oh. Stayed alive a lot more than in the first round. Would he... Did he have a good half? Or did the lock and load have a good half? Yes. I'm thinking it may have been the lock and load, but... We shall see. Let's see if we have combined from that. We don't, but in that second half, yeah... Uh, Lenny seventeen and six, still a dominant performance. But Poseidon coming back twelve and nine. More importantly, the SVS was three three, much better. Both snipers also had three med picks. It was just Lenny picking up more frags elsewhere that was really important. Also, while we're in downtime, we do have a quick plug. RGL will be running Experimental Highlander Cup number six from May fourth to May sixth. Match is going to be on eight thirty and nine thirty all three days. We'll be testing three maps. Clear Cut and Highlander, a new version of Eruption, and another map that is yet to be determined. So, if you like seeing new maps in the rotation, like being able to give feedback on you know, things you may see in the rotation soon, definitely check that out. Uh, last one, you know, we've had some good new maps coming through with Prude and Eruption recently, so with uh, Eruption may end up coming back again. We'll see how that goes, but definitely uh, check that out. Sign up, make a team. It's just one weekend. should be a lot of fun. The strange thing with Eruption at this point, right, is what what stopwatch map do you toss out? Because it's never Steel. I really never want it to be Swift Water. I think this is the one of the, if not the best maps in the game mode. Then it has to be what? You're upward. between Vigil or Upward. And yeah, we saw that Upward last time. Is it time Vigil takes a rest? I think it could be. I think it could be. I, I don't think there, other than other than Steel, I don't think there is any map, personally, that is good enough that it shouldn't ever have a season out. I think that, to me, the best map of each format is Ash and Swift. But even then, I think once every two years, maybe, once every three years, give give them a rest. Just to prevent fatigue, you know? You come back and you, you see it as an old friend coming back. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah, and we're moving on to Swiftwater. Next map, Run It Back has to win this one. If you're all just joining us, you just missed out on a 4-0 sweep for Witness Gaming, taking Asheville over Run It Back. 
nothing too out of the expectations, although it should be noted running back. Came alive a bit towards the end, made a couple rounds competitive, so we'll see if they can come into Swift Water all nice and warmed up, because they got to win this one, otherwise season ends, Witness Gaming are back-to-back champions. Yep. Back to back, going to be important here. And I mean, again, I think looking into Swift, first thing you need to look at is making sure that Lenny is not rolling your team. Granted, they've done a decent job of that before. You know, as we mentioned a couple times, they've taken this map off of Witness twice already. And even the time they lost, it was still 1 2. So they can definitely compete with them. But I mean, really, what I'm looking at is it feels like this map has been coming down to second and last against these two teams. If you can get that second push early, you go from, you know, a, a long time to a short time. And then if you can get last, because we've seen team hold last for quite some time against Witness Gaming in these playoffs so far. We saw Squirt EA nearly pull out a miracle eight-minute last hold. Last week, we saw Rib take a half with four minutes to defend last, and they did a phenomenal job of it. Witness never even got it close. Yeah, and obviously it's easy to say, you know, second and last, the, the big points of the map coming through fourth also important, but I'm actually interested to see how first shakes out because we've seen both teams very eager to put pressure on first, whether it's holding out of the tunnel uh, to just put pressure on car push from afar or just have your house squad be ready to cart dive and stall for time. You know, we've seen scout deaths actually be very important when it comes to, you know, stopping 10 seconds from not having that extra 2x coming through, no push time classes on cart just stalling you so it's likely not gonna be i don't want to say it's like never gonna be the difference maker but it's always just nice to have the extra 10 to 30 seconds that you're able to get from just playing well on first and both teams have been good at it so far if scoria had an extra 10 seconds in lower yeah, bracket they, finals they, they, may have, they may have you know they, they may have been in grants granted yeah. they would have need to win another half after that but you know that half came down to seven seconds so those little things you know a lot and a lot of the times that time comes from first you know, I would, I, I would love if I had the time to go back and see, you know, what did Scortier maybe get a scout sniped off of cart in the, while pushing first that cost them those seven seconds? Who knows? But it, it comes up to mean something more often than you'd think. Yeah. And of course, we haven't really seen the dedicated tunnel holds this season from what I can remember. At least none of that went too well in my memory, so... Most teams just opting to play second on uh, second standard. Although we have seen some variations, you know, we've seen early ground holds, uh, apartment holds. We've seen gun over side tunnel from witness. So there's a lot of things to watch out for. You know, we've criticized run it back specifically for playing ground too early and getting their medic dive bombed when there's not enough, you know, things up top in apartments to stop the heavy and soldier just from running out and shooting your 150 health medic. So hopefully these things were all seen in VOD review by these teams. If run it back, put their medic down at disad with no heavy up top again, um, I'm calling for heads. Yeah, and I want to focus in on that because that's kind of been a theme in all the swift water we've seen in these playoffs is that the second hold usually crumbles when the, the defensive medic is kind of in the floor position in that corner and you just don't have enough coverage on the window coming out of upper. No, leaving just a heavy up there is not enough. If they push three players, like a pyro, soldier, heavy, two of them are going to be able to drop down and probably kill your medic instantly. We even saw a time where uh, Foxy was holding in that corner without Uber and Witness just ran seven out of tunnel in a straight dry situation, killed the med, killed the demo, killed the pyro, and just took the point. So anytime there's a medic playing on ground without Uber, I think that to me is always kind of like, okay, well, things look like they're you know, solid in terms of defense, but they could flip in an instant. Yeah, I mean, at a certain point, it's got to come down to the essence of these kinds of games where, yes, choke point looks scary, maybe invisible wall, but the reality is, if you put, you know, seven times, like, let's say, average 175 health, if you put in 1,000 health through that choke point, enemy team cannot pump out 1,000 damage in that second to stop your medic from dying. Yeah, and I mean, or even if they do, right? You know why? It's because their demo hit all three lock and load directs. <laughs> yeah, that's sniper, the way. Their sniper hit a headshot, and the gun happened to not be, like, wrangled or hitting a bad person. Right? Even if they can stop it once, can they stop it multiple times? What happens if that sniper doesn't hit the heavy? Suddenly you have another 400 health that's just sitting there that needs to be, you know, addressed. What happens if the gun's wrangled when you pop out, right? Or the gun's dead? What happens if the sniper loses the SPS? All of that can make things go wrong, so really something to keep an eye on as far as second holds go. I mean, I don't think we've seen third factor in too much just because usually when a team 
the second, it's in a catastrophic fashion, and third gets snowballed. Yeah, we've seen a couple attempts. We've seen Witness as well try holding players on silos to mixed success. You know, sometimes it works, sometimes they just get die bombed and they lose it. Uh, I think third's really just the afterthought of the map right now. I, I, I'm even more like excited for the first shenanigans that are going to happen than to see what these teams want to do on third. Because if well, I had a bet, they're just going to hold second until they're dying breath and go for a fourth retreat. And I'm very much hoping we don't see the return of the Witness first River Uber. <laughs> Not River Uber. Oh, that was a bad look for a struggling team. But we are about to get ready here. So, Zag, put you on the spot. What's your pred? I got to go 2-1 for Riv. You know, even if they don't do it, I want to see upward. I want to see the bracket reset grand finals go to three. So I'm going to put my faith in the team that's one back-to-back, -back, that they have what it takes to just do it again, even against a full power witness, and make it happen. But with that, ready up is three. We're going to be getting into map two of Swiftwater. Run it back's pick. They win this one. We go to a map three. If Witness Gaming upset the map, they're going to be your back-to-back -back invite champions. So this could be the final map of the season. We'll see how it shakes out. Witness Gaming starting on defense, run it back on offense. And I'm going to echo your pred there. Going to go with the 2-1. Um, if if the last two rounds of Asheville went the same as the first, I might have been looking at a 2-1 for Witness. But I think that enough Rim showed enough signs of life. Enough. They showed enough ability to adapt there that I think that'll bode well for them on Swift. You know, it shows that they're they're awake, they're thinking, they're trying to improve and they were trying to win. And that I think is gonna bode well on Swift. If they were just kind of sleepwalking through Asheville, I think that, you know, maybe they end up getting kind of quick hooked the first half and then they're gonna lose from there. But they're going into this eyes wide open as uh, they'll set their own offense here. Which normally I'm against, but a lot of the times Rib starts on offense, they end up with a blazing time. Yeah, we saw them get like what, a, a sub five last week in one of the halves? I think so. I mean, in, in granted, it's not in the rotation in this match, but on Vigil in Law for Bracket Finals, they put up a three and a half minute time, which is probably close to an invite record. As yep. uh, Poseidon and Mori, first two going down, Fish gonna get caught out. Mako getting the gun as well, but already being rebuilt by Hyphen Chalk, sniped off card. Big kill into Blank there by Jay-Z. Just gonna stop him from building any banner and take down that, you know, cow mangler he was just charge shotting the cart with over and over. So with that, they will be able to push this one up at a 3x. I like the enforcer out of the bat from Jay-Z. Just gonna try and shoot this sentry gun down. We'll take enough damage that we'll have to back up, but GG gonna go down and with no scale on that cart, it has stopped moving. I mentioned every second matters, so Birdo get on that thing. As he will get on and start pushing it again. Mako continually trying to get some ground up top, not going to find it, but oh, Fish Birdo, caught out at spawn, and yeah, Blank finds Birdo, that cow mangler coming back in. There's a te- where is, is there a tele exit? I guess it's in tunnel. Must have just jumped cart right away, but yeah, still no cart cap as we're taking it, I think, into a, minute, a full minute here on the point. Likely going to be a minute ten or so on the final cap. Yeah, retreat First comes cap. through though, so... Won't be too bad. Let's see what it is. The time out through first. 113, so you're pretty close. But yeah, it's going to be first capped up. Witness Game going to be backing up to their normal setup. Fish already... Or he's not actually going to be in. He's going to be waiting for the decloaking the other side. Spam coming through from Mori, trying to get this gun down early. But we'll just get built up in the meantime. So here we go. Everything is as normal. Jay-Z is actually behind with Enforcer ready to shoot the gun. He could get right now, and he will. Yep, gun already dead. That said, Mori... Trying to make you, but trying to team It didn't work. Nope. Yep. But they got Lenny! That's a huge pick! Yeah, Jay-Z and Mako dead, but Lenny's really the big one. The gun's dead as well. Nowhere really to be found right now. Typhoon's building a pack of its spawn. They can just go straight through this. Exile finds Exile next! This could just be a straight up no Uber dry push unless Blake uses it on a soldier. Into the cow mangler! Oh my god, what year are we in? They're gonna try to run into the cart, but nothing really going. Counter Uber popped out onto the pouch, reflects the cow mangler, and it's just blank here with any forward pressure. He's gonna try to go in. He needs some damage onto Poseidon. We'll force him down, but loses his life for it. Here comes the resack from Witness Gaming. They have their level three building. This is gonna be huge. Yeah, but look how close the cart is. Jay-Z got wrangled, so he can't tap it in. But Chalk coming out of Spiral, great shot by Lenny. That said, Oh, he's going to take up a side in two. He's going to look for that SVS. Going to find Chi Chi 2. Trying to go in for the cart. Will not get it, but watch for Jay Easy or Mako. If anyone can tap that cart because it is inches away from the cap. Yeah, when it's gaming it out just in time, though, to stop it from being capped up. We see some upper pressure coming in from Birdo of all people. Scout normally doesn't fit through this tiny choke point that well. It's going to be Mako taking his place. Jay Easy's team... going for a frag, not the cart. Oh, yeah. look at this tele exit. It's above side tunnel. Where the gun is, that was how Hyphen got the level 3 up in the middle of that. 
Yeah, they're walking out of tunnel trying to get some work done, but Mori gonna take a lot of damage and Mako gonna go down Jay as well. Jay-Easy finds Typhon, Blink dead as well! So that gun actually gonna take Jay-Easy, he wasn't cloaked up, but free the spam. But the cards rolled back so far, Zag! Yeah, they, they didn't go for the touch at all, so just gonna keep end up rolling back. The witness gaming defense is holding close opposite side of what the defense normally holds, but they do have the Uber. XL again getting sniped on the entry though. A lot of side tunnel presence coming out from run it back. They have to turn and address this witness, but they're just gonna get put between multiple angles. Spam onto the gun coming out from Mori, gonna get rebuilt to a level two, but with fish dead. Oh, but look, Chalk and Mako just got upper all for themselves. Flu already yeah, stabbed out. This has to be it. But that said, they have to do something about the combo. Blake is sitting there with that. Both sides gonna exchange. But Chalk sniped out. Lenny able to hit the shot. So now they no longer have that upper control. Birdo getting sneak card. Mako in behind though. Lenny Flanks, dead. Yeah. Flanks kills Lenny. And with the pipes, the lock and load all the way up. Gonna take down two more. Blake running for his life. The lock uh, takes can't no the prisoners. Lock. Yep, and there's the second cap. Sub four minutes. Could have been faster, but you're not too upset about that for running Link back. Link finds still Foxy, turn this. though, just sitting up with the banner in apps. Finds the medic. Blake going to go down as well, but that equalizes the Ubers. Blake actually going to have a slight add over Foxy. But Cart, as you said, capped up sub four. Could have been faster. There was a really good stabilization from Witness there. Yeah, Poseidon going to hang in for the shot. Will not go down, but takes XL. Oh, but Chalk, he's diving out. Looking for it. Will just get taken down. That was a lot more exciting than it had any right to be. But with that, it's going to be Witness Gaming kind of getting a third hold going. We see this more less uh, often nowadays than we used to. But they do have the players. They have the Uber ad to try and make it work. So Witness Gaming going to be holding up, getting some players buffed up. This is up. crazy. Blake spawned three seconds before Foxy and yet has over a 30% ad. Yeah, been building very so, well. Really, I'd, I'd argue just poor building on the side of Foxy. Maybe didn't have enough people to heal and was stuck healing the same player, but not a good sign because that's just more seconds you're going to waste. What Blake's going to have, and Foxy just going to waste another 10, 15 seconds just even getting ready for the exchange. Yeah, and they're still building slowly, honestly. That advantage look at was where, up look to at 40%. Where Blake's playing. He's out of the bunker, just in the corner. No look at this, though. Height is being... Height is being held by running back right now. Mako and Mori have this. They could get a lot of spam up to Fluke here. His Blue's only taken low, and he's just dead. They can't even get a flash to him. So will XL. Mori, big kills with that lock and load. Who can even take this Uber at this point? They had a Cal Mangler soldier before. Who's going to be this time? That said, Fish finds Poseidon. Okay, yeah. Mori, that's a bit int, but he finds the, the sniper, I guess. You would have liked him to kill the sentry Ubers, gun with sticky bombs. They've got three dead right now. I guess they need to wait for the Mori spawn. Mori should have just stayed up and spammed stickies. I don't know why he'd int down there. Going to take it in on the pyro and chalk gets what is dropped. That? Disaster, Uber. They got the force out from Blake. But that's not really a win. No, that was so down. bad by Rib. Yeah. Mori can't int there. You have so many picks. Just take an Uber through. Get the gun. But they just lose Jay everything. They lose Foxy. <laughs> that's fine, but Foxy's dead again. Blake's going to have Uber. Rib, that's so sloppy. Yeah, no, ultimately that face stab aside, that really is not a good look from them. They had picks, you know, the slow building, Mori dying at a really inopportune time. They take a pyro heavy Uber from tracks instead of dropping down, and then you drop the heavy, who's going to be the main firepower behind that? Just, again, Like, you really have a heavy demo here. pick and upper control, and your demo man ints for a sniper? Like, just take the Uber. It won't be Flu going down, though. Poseidon finding his team a good opener. That's another heavy pick they can operate on. And we see Blake. He's holding at the silos again. Trying to decide where he wants to go. Decides silos are not for him. Backs up behind the sentry gun. Taken low. And high ground again being held by Rib. They're only 50%. They can try to get some spam here if Mori doesn't kamikaze into the gun. But it's going to be XL lobbing a ton of damage back at them. Foxy mm. taking half. Poseidon had a shot onto Blake, it looked like. But gets yeah, bombed immediately. Fish going to be caught out in response, but again, just no entries here. Foxy still only on 85, building really slowly, it feels like, as Exile gets aggro into the choke, gets a pipe onto Foxy, going to be forced back with more, but it looks like they're going to head IT for this Uber. Chalk uh, already Chuck, up yeah. there. Yeah, free pick onto Exile. Exile. They've gotten so many combo picks here, they will pop the Use in but here, but it's out. so early to save Chalk, and now Foxy's not with Mori, disconnected what? in the Uber because Blank is behind, causing havoc. Foxy didn't want to draw people, but Mori didn't get the memo, goes in alone. And yeah, just really sloppy, this uncoordinated play right now. They're getting and again. good card time, but when he finds the shot onto Foxy, not even sure where that was, probably backing out tracks. I don't even know, but that like, is, is, is Mori anywhere. playing full muted right now with like with Spotify on? Is that what's happening? Because I, I don't know. I don't think you can blame that on him. 
that that was like a set play, and then Foxy didn't drop down or keep the beam I, on I him. guess, yeah. It, but it's hard still. to. You you have these advantages. They constantly have advantages to play off of, and they are doing nothing with them. Again, yeah, really, just not converting on those, as you said. You know, they've gotten these picks. It looked like things were going really well for them on second, but they're just hitting a wall here on third, and the lack of any good Ubers. You know, it feels like. It feels like they never actually got any practice practice against a team holding third in their scrims. Yeah, is what I mean, this also, feels like to me. in both in all the matches so far between these two teams, there's never been a problem for really either of them. Are we gonna pop this demo again? Again, they have an entry onto Exile. Poseidon cleans that one up. They have Poseidon in the window. There's no way this is not a win. Like Foxy's building slow, sure, whatever. Just get spammed down, get more picks. There, there we go. Fish and blank dead, gun down, Uber Force. This is what should happen. This is what should have happened four minutes ago. Yeah, and I mean they're going to probably stay here just to get the Uber Force. Pablo going in, going to actually get the Force. That was Melon That's in there, fine. too, just getting get the in point. there. Yep. They want to get the Uber. Everyone back out into spawn, Blake included. They're going to move into fourth now. And, oh, four minutes That's through second, nine rough. minutes through third. This is about the same pace that Scorpier was pushing in that eight and a half miracle. Yeah, but Mori finds Lenny with some stickies, so maybe some signs of life here. But FC, ooh, hit with the lock and load, popped up, lands on the ledge, no fall damage. Almost snuck out by the revolver, but the spray angle is too much for Fish to overcome. Foxy will survive for now, but Lenny already spawned back up. And really no adds to push off of. Yeah, Lenny on the tree just immediately wins an SPS doming Poseidon. Again, four SPS wins in a row for him, Mori, Chalk, Dad, the rest of the players. Walking up Normandy here, can't get any damage going up the hill. Blake gonna get a pack for his trouble. 100% Uber for him in just a second. Foxy at least has not died. We'll be having Uber shortly to match, but look at how aggressive Witness are playing on this. Lenny, if he picks Mori off here, it's just another delay. Doesn't get the shot. Blank going for a bomb <laughs> up to Chalk. He's crazy. Almost got the punch. But no, Uber gonna come in through Choke. Just used in a straight 9v9. Getting a bunch of flashes. This could maybe bode well for Riv that can keep any ground. Watch Lenny, though. Being forced back, that lock and load actually did a decent amount of damage to them. They're being forced back. Gun's dead. Lenny, the most forward player on his team right now, he will get forced back. Blake is hurt, so they cannot play that forward, and that may be the uh, kind of space that they needed. Watch but Mori, though. Mori taking a lot. Gets the pack just in time as Exile hits him with a lock and load pipe. They get a pick on... Yeah, there's Mori going down. They will at least Decide get Lenny. Decide, revenge onto Lenny. And watch Fish coming Fish. in. Gonna find the stab onto Chalk. No heavy Level on the head, two. which is going to be a lot, but I think they may be able to get this up. We'll see. No nope. Mangler shot. misses. Ooh. If that Cow Mangler hit, it would have wiped the cart. Here comes Blank, though. Reflect one. Can't get the second. He does stall. No one's on the cart. Blank with the touch just in time. And here comes the Cavalry. Witness Gaming running forward, cleaning up all these players. They're all trapped in No Man's Land. It's just Foxy and Poseidon in here. No one opened the shutter. No hope, and they get wiped. Take note there, because that's how you repush on fourth. You make sure your soldier's the first one in, go in, saw the card, get them off it, start it rolling back, everyone walks out behind him. You know, you, you disrespect the sniper a little bit, your med doesn't peek any sight lines, you get space back, and look at this, they're already now forward holding in the choke. Yeah. And Foxy sniped out, where even is that? Wait, that's the crack shot, he hit the crack shot walking out of the spawn room on the cross. He hit the crack shot, that's a really good one. That, yeah, that's something you don't see very often. He was lined up perfectly for that. You only have a few inches to deal with there. Foxy thinking it's a safe peek, and for almost every single time, it is. No one hits that shot. That is just a, you know, a testament to how well Lenny has been playing that he's able to hit that. If Witness Gaming do end up closing things out here tonight, he is the unanimous MVP. This has to be the most unanimous MVP vote our jails ever had. He's carried Witness Gaming in their time of need, and in their time of strength, he's been the front man. So, it's so much work being done. Foxy's dead again. This time is stretching into unreasonable territory. You're not going to give it to Exile? No. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, as you said, time probably over, probably nearing 13 minutes right about now, as uh, looks like this, I wouldn't surprise me here if we just saw the hard hold in on third. Yeah, they do have Mako in behind, is doing a lot of damage, oh, and with Mori. the help of Mori, yeah, they the up a lot of kills. Finds two, make that a third onto Melon, and... Okay, surely. Full Where'd ace. that come from? Uh, I mean, they killed him with a Blake, nearly a full ace, so... You know, with no one to charge, that medic might as well have lost half his uber. It will be Mori jumping into spawn. If he can get any kills here, 
it'd be huge, but we'll just stall them up for now, doing some damage, stalling some crit heals, so there's that. Look he needs to Lee live. Hiding up top. He's gonna Mori? find Lee. Oh, Pablo coming up top too, takes him out. You don't bank on the scout peeking aggro like that, but I mean, Rib, where was that walk forward, kill everyone? Why not do that earlier? Yeah, at any point. I mean, they'll have to, they'll have to see if they can Kill do anything about it forehead. when it swaps sides. But for now, this time at 13 minutes, it's so it's such a, a long shot for Rid. You have to just give yourself as much of a chance as possible here. Get this one into that hole as fast as possible. Here comes the Uber out of the side room. Even exchange, no one really taking too much damage. And it's going to be a 99 in post with Chalk gets back. Melon is super deep denying that. I thought she was going to go down for that, but she's able to get out. Lenny mm -hmm. already went in the SDS onto Poseidon, they can play right around the pit, but it doesn't even matter as there's no real pressure to go off of. Fish gonna be the only kill that they're gonna find here. Pablo next. But Flu sitting up on that traffic light, gonna Bomb. get arrow they did it for Blake. First rocket, second one does not connect. Blake stays alive. Thought Mako may have had something there, but Flu up on the oh, Bird was traffic right. light. Bruno's just gonna tap it in! Yeah, they walked in with a heavy, and uh heavy had to shoot uh onto Chalk, because if Flu doesn't focus Chalk, you know, Flu kills him. Or Chalk kills Flu, so he has to kill the Heavy and the scout survives, so... Sub-14? Not great. Not great at all. Correct. That is correct. I mean, it really just did not have a plan on third. Things looked really good on second with how many interesting picks they were getting. And I mean, Witness was responding accordingly, getting some really solid, you know, stabilizations. But just it collapsed when it hit third, and then even fourth as well. Really, just did not feel like they had a way, any kind of plan to manufacture an advantage. They were just fully dependent on it. Feels like either people on witness getting caught out or their pick class is finding something. Yeah, I mean, okay, let's be honest. First went a bit longer than it could have. Second, you know, it was pretty reasonable. You know, they they were a bit slower than you could be, but it was reasonable. Fourth, they did good for what they're given, and the fifth, they just roll it in. Third just killed them. Third really killed them and all the momentum that they had ever going after they finally won second. So it, it's, it really just looks like, yeah, like you're saying, a lack of practice on that specific point. But now they're on defense. If they can hold for 14 minutes, you know, they probably deserve the round win. But it is a tough hill to climb. Hey, if you hold the witness game for 14 minutes on any map, you absolutely deserve the round win. As uh, Flu going to be the first one going down, but Chalk lock and loaded out of the window quite early. Blank going to go over and jump right back out. Just uh, making a statement he can get over the roof. But yeah, that's going to force everyone back up into tunnel right now. No one playing in-house yeah, either. Yeah, it's insane. Because Chalk died. Chalk is only the one playing in the house. And now Lenny popped up on second, just gets two immediately, including the SVS win. So it's going to have to be an immediate backup. It was Birdo as well. Blank already on the chase. No HP, but will be a bit of a nuisance here. Get some damage down, but yeah. Very fast first coming out of Witness Gaming. Really no key players dropped in that entire thing. Yeah, and no one really even, you know, I guess, you know, time on first. Probably not as relevant on a 14-minute defense. Every second. But uh, Squirtier would probably disagree. That was 52. I mean, that was about the same 53. time, yeah, they put up. I think it was 13, 14 or so, somewhere around there. Yeah, F mid 50s-ish on the first. So good fast time through one. For witness gaming now we'll see what they want to do they have their medic rotating for a fast apartments trade i kind of like this when you have this much time to work with just put the pressure on nice and early we'll see who's there to stop it sticky is really going to be the only ones in leaf doing his best but they're through with the pyro more players trying to get some damage forcing a lot of flash right now is melon and paul and pablo in from behind they won't get the ng blake will die though and melon as well so blake doing a pretty bad disservice not backing out of that shutter yeah i got trapped in no one uh Again, it should be the medic. It should exactly, be the medic holding yeah. that door. Admittedly, yeah, you're right. That's a blank finds the gun, gonna die for it, but maybe needs an opening. Too many people dead, most likely. To see where is GG ready to rebuild that back in spawn. Looks like gonna uh, build that right up. Should be back in 30 seconds or so. And that's actually gonna be Fish getting his knife melted, chased back uh, into mansion. He's gonna get this chased down by the scout. He's eventually gonna go down to this. Yeah, he's dead. So that's, now Witness Gaming, yeah, that's crossed. Witness Gaming down in Uber, but they are pop, uh, drying out of Look tunnel right now. Look how Foxy is in this corner, and there comes in blank. Yeah, that's Just what like happens. we talked about, Foxy and Poseidon, that's a med and sniper. They even have a soldier up there watching. They had a heavy two. They prepared. had a heavy two. Yeah. It's not enough. You have to either meet them at the door or have multiple threats ready to stop that. If you just let your medic get dive bombed, which it, we saw it happen to them last week, you will lose. There's nothing you can do if you just let your medic get dive bombed like that with not enough pressure up top. So, 
Witness Gaming, gonna be pushing this one through. Good Reflex from Melon, gonna clear the card for now. But with Exile dead, their Sticky Spam is a bit weak. They will kill Mako though, so not a problem. Yep, so nothing do, no worries for Witness Gaming right now. Gonna get this capped up in really just under three minutes. So an even faster time than Rip put up regardless before they ran into the wall on third and probably had a pause because of the quiet, but no, just no one up on third. Yeah. As all the spawns coming in Melon. Already sticking the shutter. Very forward, yep. Sticks already coming up from Exile. Gonna be forced back as does not have heals. But uh Don't even think they're gonna attempt up this one. They're all coming out on fourth for Rip. Yeah, so just immediate snowball from two to three, which is I feel like what happens most of the time on this map nowadays, but Rib just not getting the memo last round will end up being 11 minutes left. They have to defend 4 and 5 if they want to stay alive in the round. Otherwise, 1-0 lead championship point for Witness on the line. Yep, exactly, yeah. And it's looking like that's going to happen. I mean, you had two and a half minutes here and then just simply recreate the Squirt Yay 8-minute last hold. But uh, awesome. Uber's going to come out right now. Exile walking up, trying to get space right now. Counter pop, Foxy launched forward. Able to surf back though. Blake, Blake stalled up. Good. up. Great pencil from Mori there. Onto Blake. Has the sticks waiting for him. Right as the Uber fades. Jay Z coming in behind. Gonna get one butter knife. A second gun kill onto Exile. And that is a successful fourth defense. Yeah, Mori alone on that solo does everything he needs to to pop Blake up and get the sticky, the one shot on the way down the Uber fades. Really solid mechanics from Mori there. And now, run it back, have a chance to stabilize. You know, we've pegged them as underdogs here, and they are, they have a lot of time to make up, but if they keep winning exchanges, if Poseidon gets hot, wins these SVSs, nothing's impossible. Yeah, and I mean, we've seen Witness struggle with oh, No, the not the corner, not the corner! Oh, Exile almost got the pick onto Foxy, Foxy's one! Living on the edge there, yeah. I mean, and we saw when, when Rib lost the half last week, it was off of this forward hold. Yeah, Foxy got trapped Foxy in the corner and bumped. Got, Foxy just got That's why I said not the killed. corner. Yeah. I had flashbacks. So we'll see if Witness Gaming wants to try that again. I that memory, to be honest. Yeah, Blake does have 80%. Tries to cross, does hit his head on the wall. We'll be getting there anyway. Melon going to eat some sp uh, spam. Onto the Iron Bomber now, Mori. Not liking the lock and load for this point. Decloak onto Mori. Mori taken very low. Narrowly keeps his life. That is super important that he lives there. And with Fish dead, there's no sap going to be available for this gun. So they're just going to have to Uber onto the combo. Yep, Uber's popped out on both sides. Only a dispenser to be found so far. Well, but Blake, far Blake is levitated. <laughs> gonna find himself back in garage. Kills though. I mean, a little bit more in favor of Witness Ooh. Gaming right now. Mako, the air shot and taken down right Exos there. Exos won. They need to clean him up. And Birdo does, but they lose Poseidon in the meantime with Fish finding that stab. Gun gonna go down. So it's just chalk out here. And they don't like it. They don't want to take their chances recontesting this for now. They still have a lot of time on this card. It's not even to the ramp yet, but with Lenny at the top of this ramp, gotta imagine it's hard. They're gonna bomb him. Good space being made by Mako, but the gun and Lenny are still here, and Mori's dead. Yep, they're gonna lose Chalk, too. Flew on yeah. the head, was doing so much. Lenny onto Leaf, and that is Foxy, the only they one up so in much the combo. Space. Not even healing anyone on last. Blake actually gonna take the lead in Uber there, just ever so slightly. Yeah, and Exile already spamming down that sentry on Lenny's. Look how far up he is. He's looking for the SVS pick, running up the ramp. Exile gonna go up as well, looking for damage on Tamori. Doesn't like his odds. Gonna go down, but yeah, Fish, Fish. with the decloak out of spawn finds the pick no onto Foxy. There. Yeah, no one checks it. All right, well, eight minutes for last. We've yeah, eight seen minutes. Before. Uber does that. Do your best. Two to three minutes into this, witness starts getting flashbacks, and maybe it becomes doable. Yep, they're gonna roll that cart all the way up to the switch in just a second. Chalk up here on the traffic light. He's gonna have to do so much work without this Uber to help him. Needs a 450 ASAP. Look at Gun. this arc of six stickies on the cart. Yeah. It's a nice little geometric pattern there. They're trying to block the switch so they can't flip it. I'm not sure how that one works though. <laughs> but it will be the Uber up the ramp coming from Witness Gaming. They will get air blasted. Good solid job by Leaf to kind of deny this. But the cart stack is coming in and frags are as well. Yeah, man, look at this. Blank and Pablo in causing chaos. No more eight-minute ghosts to haunt Witness Gaming right here on last. And Birdo living for <laughs> way too long on cart, but will eventually go down. The cap comes in with seven minutes remaining. So seven-minute defense from Rip. Six-minute offense. In a vacuum. Was it seven? I thought it was 14 minutes. Oh, yeah, yeah, 14, yeah. Seven minutes. Yeah, seven-minute defense in a vacuum, not the worst. Paid with a 14-minute offense. Ugh. Yeah. They call those unwinnable. When it happens. So now for Fish with the back, immediate ready up. <laughs> I mean I would as well, if you are witness. You're feeling so confident now. For run it back, they are under the maximum pressure. 
they just got bracket resetted last week. They're now down 0-1, down 0-1 on their map pick. So it's do or die. You win this round or season's over. You threw being upper seed and you let the championship slip through your fingers when you know it was so attainable. Yeah, I mean, the worst thing is that you think they're se- they had second in four minutes. If they got that, se- they had, the- it was in the cards, right? If they just pulled what they pulled on fourth sooner, you know, and they didn't get stalled, if they just were able to do third faster, then maybe that's winnable. It's, so it's I don't the two think it's consecutive over. plays. Yeah. Like, right, okay. Witness Gaming established a hold on third because they played a good back out after defending second for a reasonable amount of time. That's fine. That's good plan, Witness. Run It Back had three opportunities to break that, all very good before they actually did, and they threw each one of them away. Yeah. No, that is true. It just throws on all of them. I mean, they, they really should have had second in two minutes, too, with the amount of picks they had. Just not a, just a combo of not enough card time and losing key players at bad times. Yeah, I'm looking at the logs right now. Yes, Mori is top fragging, top DPMing. He's doing good with his with his mechanics. I mentioned on third, he had a really amazing play to snipe Blake on the way down after popping him up. That's not the issue. The issue is him feeding twice in a row on third. I'll give him the benefit of the doubt in the second one that the call was just to go and he was going to go no matter what. But the one onto the center gun was just inexcusable. After you have a heavy and a demo pick, when you have Uber, I can't excuse that one. The other half of this is, of course, that Poseidon going 13 and 16, Lenny 27 and 10. 400 DPM on Sniper, 37 headshots. So even with all those kills, doing even more damage. And SVS is 7-3. to three. Yeah, does not, not surprise me. As now, defense for running back. I mean, I, after your offense goes that badly, a, a defense first is probably fine. It, you're probably thinking if we can get a 7 or 8 again. We know we can do a six or seven offense. We've done it before. Might give them some confidence and like some pep in their step. They need like know they have to play properly and pressure properly. I would have liked to see them push first. They were able to just you know play third normally, but it just didn't come to fruition. So now have to get a good defense for witness gaming. You can throw a knockout punch right here. Yeah, literally end the season. <laughs> Come back, you know, avenge the fact that you lost an upper bracket finals by shutting them out here in the yeah, bracket. Yeah, be a total shutout. I mean, I just... One of the things, Zach, that we always talk about when it comes to invite playoffs is the ability to adapt, right? The ability to recognize your past mistakes and improve off of them. We saw Rib do that on Asheville. But over yes. the course of all of these maps, we have not seen them adapt to Foxy getting dive-bombed out of apps on second. Yeah, it's the same mistake that they were making all last week. You saw Witness make an attempt, right? Why do you think Blake was playing on the other side of tracks? Yeah, that's a good shot, actually. And granted, they're afforded the ability to do that partially because they play tunnel, uh, side tunnel gun, which helps with coverage on people trying to walk out at your medic. But it's just such a good adaptation when you've noticed that medics hiding in that corner off Uber is a death sentence. And I just need yeah. to see Rib do something like that. You're playing your medic there has been catastrophic for the past two matches on Swiftwater. Even though you've won them, it's been by far the source of your biggest worries. So do something about that. If you don't want to, you either have to, if you want to continue playing that, you have to attribute more resources to the apartments to stop your medic from getting dive bombed or just play further back on the tracks. I'm not going to ask them to try the, the side tunnel gun and the, the opposite corner hold because they probably haven't practiced that. That's fine. Just the strategy you've been doing, find what's not working about it, because it's been very clear what the issues are. I think it could be as simple as just only have your med down there when they have Uber. Because, I mean, really, if it's if no, if neither side has Uber, right? Uh, just then you need to make sure you keep your gun up, you keep your sniper up, and you don't need to worry about them drying seven people out of the tunnel because your demo is up top spamming them where he can't get shot back. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's great to play down there to stuff them in tunnel if you have Uber and you're even Ubers, but if you don't have, that position just makes you vulnerable. Yes, you have slightly worse tunnel coverage, right? Because you're not playing aggressive, but you're also much less likely to instantly lose nine people because your med went down. You know, risk versus reward. The slightly increased reward of playing close to tunnel to deny them 
not worth the risk of losing your med. Yeah, and I think something has to do it has something to do with the fact that like teams like being in control when they're holding on the ground. They feel like they can stuff tunnel directly. They feel like they have the opportunity to kind of direct the flow of the offense. But the reality is when you're playing on the ground like that, if you're not playing like a flank side tunnel gun or multiple people like spread out on the bridge, those players on the ground are in effect isolated. They can get ran at by seven and the enemy team will have more DPS onto you than you have onto them. They'll have better angles onto you than you have onto them. And it's a recipe for disaster. So I'm not going to ask them to change everything about their game plan. Just stop letting your medic get dive bombed off Uber. That's all I ask of them. Yeah, and ironically, the side tunnel gun almost contributes to that because it allows it allowed Blake to play on you know the side tunnel side. But if you have the gun up top, that is one of the things that stops the dive bombers. We've been see I've been seeing more and more teams move the gun to side tunnel because it's harder to spam. But then the you know. It, there's always a push and pull, right? Yes, your gun's safer. Yes, it's harder to spam. The trade-off is that your med's far more exposed. And I mean, like... to Rib's credit, right? The meta had been, if the enemy combo's up, you rotate to meet the attacking combo. If they're up top, you go up top. If they're in tunnel, you go in tunnel. It's a relatively new thing, I feel like, this season where we've seen such a fixation on people dive-bombing out of the window because it's finally been identified as a counter. Rib is not adapting. Yeah, I mean, they'll have one more round of Swift Water, perhaps two, if they can get this one on the board to make those adaptations and keep this grand final going. Starting out right now, Rib need to get a solid defense. Win this game, you're going to be pushing, trying to up their seven minute time. They'll be happy with a seven minute for sure, but if they're going to be shooting for better. So we'll see if they can do it. Run it back. Again, this is the season. It's on the line. You got to put everything on the table right here. We'll see yeah. what they have going. I mean, this was, it would be such a Cinderella win if they could make it because Rib's been a team. Been an invite for a few seasons, took them a while to kind of break out of that two, three, four win range. Finally make it into playoffs, they've gradually been improving, and this is kind of the season where they break out, they get a half off a witness in the regular season, come out of nowhere and play some of the cleanest TF2 we've seen in the upper bracket finals, and now it's just about kind of, you know, finishing off, finishing them off, getting the conversion. It's double Elam for a reason. And they got the, they've got gotten the one win, they just need to find the second here. Yeah, and I've I mean, seen them do it before. We've seen them do it before. We've seen flashes of it tonight. Those sec those last two mid fights on Asheville. That's the you know the beginning of the second push last half. The fourth push when they finally got it. All of those have looked really good. It's just stringing together those moments. Yep, Gates gonna drop down onto Witnesses' attack in this second half. Last time we saw them get you know 55 about, which is a very good offense time. We'll see if they can make good on that one again. Fuors can go early into the ravine, looking to make some work, but gonna get spin out early and just killed unceremoniously. That said, baited money out into a or Mori out into a sightline. Lenny able to pick oh. him up. Leaf too, a little bit too aggro right outside the tunnel here. Lenny finding them through the window of the house. They so do have they're already backing this up. This time he does have a Chi -Chi spy on him. Out! Great aggro from Blank, finds the Engineer, gonna take him down. Exile likely gonna lose his life too, but that is more than a worthwhile to trade to stop that gun from getting set up. But look at Cart! They, yeah, they, they, they do stall Lenny and Exile, but in the end the players got cleaned up, so it's only gonna be about a 5-ish, maybe 10 second stall coming out there, but you'll take that over Force the Engineer to rebuild this entire setup. But look at this, Steak Cloak onto Poseidon, they saw him, Fish nearly not getting that one, so... Knife Melted will go down for it. I like the going for an aggressive play when they have enough cart time left, enough runway to be in that tunnel safely. So now we'll be the back out. I want to see how Gigi's gun coming along because the, uh, the apartments exchange about to come through. Looks like gun is not even going to be a factor in it. Yep, Scout Uber coming through. Something we've seen a lot from Witness. Not too many other teams. Scout and Pyro going to go through just once to make sure they can get the Shot Uber. They're out on the bridge. Melon going in deep, getting some good damage and even hits a reflect, but not going to find any kills. Hello, Getting chalk is big. Both. But yeah, chalk going down, as you said. Big kill right there. There's still an upper, though. Poseidon in upper, looking down into tunnel. Not too much pressure what elsewise. It's stalled by. Oh, it's just not moving. Nothing, yeah. They're just not on it. I feel like someone should be on this cart. It's going to be Lenny taking it upon himself, get on that cart, and rest the combo. Now rotating in. Times three on the cart. SPS going to come up here. Poseidon needs to win this one for his team. Neither sniper hitting the shot right away, but sap onto the gun. Gun just dead immediately. G has no time to save that one. They do get Exile Foxy and Hyphen. Foxy in the corner, Blank coming in! Oh, Reflect Great finally. Defense. But Flu's coming. But Flu next! A He's new gonna challenger. go! Guys, Medic in the corner! Defended this time. Scout now, Pablo running for it. Defended! Foxy on 40 HP. Finally, the Medic doesn't die to the dive bomb. 
finally, and that is going to be Birdo going in deep, able to find Blake. Actually, where was that? Somewhere in, yeah, somewhere inside tunnel. So able to find him in the chaos of everyone going in there, but that's the adaptation we're talking about, right? I saw Foxy down there, I'm like looking up, I'm like, when are the bombers coming? I mean, they're able to barely they keep came. Foxy alive. They definitely came, but yeah. Decent enough defense there to stop them from funneling out of the window. We saw Blank go for another one on his respawn and got stuffed at the door, so... Really good rotations, and now they have the Uber, they're gonna drop down, play front side. Blake only in 35 though, so you gotta imagine they're just gonna drive push out a tunnel and try and get something Ooh, here, big but... shot on Tamori though. Yep. Kill Tamori, sap on the gun as well, gun's gonna get insta-gib here by the lock and load. XL gonna walk up, they just wanna get this force and they will, it's a solo pirate just Uber leaf and Foxy, onto Leaf. Leaf getting blown back, Blake does not have to use... He's only all, he's only at 60, yeah, doesn't no have. pressure on him at all. Oh, and just Foxy shot, backed out the wrong way. Going down. Yeah, Foxy backed control. out main. They're just dead. Yeah, Blank and Flute took upper control in the middle of that. Mori going down was too big of a loss. What? And that Uber, I could sense the desperation there. I think they might have thought Blake had and wanted to get... No, they know Blake didn't have. Birdo killed him in post there. Mori got sniped and they popped in anyway. Solo Pyro Uber on defense. Like, I can't justify that in any way. It really just felt like a panic pop, like, oh, we're supposed to go in here, let's just go solo pyro, give up our ad, then die on back out because we have no upper control. You could have called the scout in, too. Birdo was still alive. Do something with that. At least put a better thought, you know, ability, a better threat onto Blank. But Blank jumping forward, gonna get taken out. Chalk playing super aggro, gets a good arrow from Foxy to keep their heavy alive. Exile and Pablo gonna go down as well, so forth a little bit stable here, but four minutes through third is a pretty good time right now. For witness, but really last and four, last and fourth are the points where I feel like the game gets made or break. Is yeah, made or break. I mean, silver lining for run it back is that Blake did pop his Uber there, so they're gonna have a twenty percent ad to play with on defense. They defend relatively well on fourth. We'll give him credit for that. Here's the spy jumping out, easy stab into Poseidon. Can't get the follow up, but that's Lenny with an SVS ad. He's just gonna be in this house uncontested. We know what he can do. Yep. They're Ubering. In the come, yep. In comes the Uber oh. right now. And they're gonna, even going to lose Chalk on it. Hyphen, the only kill they get. They are down numbers after this Uber. Jay -Z they got Birdo space Jay-Z and Birdo. That's, they just took an aggro Uber and they lost four. Five. Four next. They're four up after that. Uh, it's a disaster for running back. They, they, they're feeling so pressured to make plays here, but not, nothing's in the right situation. Nothing's in the right spot. It, it's just, it has to be Mori bombing in solo and hitting a great, like, float onto Blake. Otherwise, the Uber is not getting anything. Poseidon tries to peek the shutter immediately. They're, they're, they're just making solo plays. Everyone's just making solo plays right now for running back, and it is not working. Surprise, yeah. the team playing the team game is winning. Who would have thought? It's even in the name. It said five minutes through four. I mean, they've held them on last for four minutes before. We figure they get two, maybe three minutes on here, and despite all of this, not a bad time at all. But you said that done. Lenny's dead, so he can't make an impact for the moment. But, uh, Cart's still moving up right now, so we'll see what happens once Witness starts pushing. Right and they the get top. it! They get up top right! Flash Mako, save with Melon 1 HP. doing a ton of distraction, getting Mako popped all the way up. Melon gonna go down, though. Only the Pyros trade out. Fish gonna be next. And they do get the gun, so gonna have to keep an eye on Cart. Chuck's yeah, staring Mori, down, though. but Pablo going around. <laughs> He's dead. dead Look at Flula, flank up top, does so much work. Here comes the Spy, doing damage. He's gonna get two. They get Chalk and Foxy, though. Blank and Exile, it's just four players up for rib. They have to suck onto it. GG's building a level one. If that can get built in time, it'd be Look big, but they have no HP. Both no health. Oh, that degreaser got Six. popped up into the Even sky faster. twice in a row. Make that three. I just watched a degreaser go flying. But yeah, six minutes even faster, as you said. Then the last time, just, it's almost unfortunate because it feels like Swiftwater got identified as a weakness of witnesses, and it's been picked against them so many times. They're they learning how to play they're it. They're learning, they're just gradually getting caught I, I was going to point out, like, I, I've been pretty critical on Rib throughout this map, but Witness Gaming played that last push really, really well. Where after the Uber exchange through Upper, they kind of dissipated. They put some players on cart pressure duty. They had a couple players shooting through the windows, and then they repushed their heavy double man through that same top uh, doorway and got so much damage, and they got kills. It was a good collapse. Witness Gaming played that by the book. It was pretty flawless for a last push on even Uber. So it really it does feel like that. What you're saying is true. It feels like they've played the map so much they've learned to play it at this point. And specifically, I feel like a bit of an HL history lesson. So I feel like Jacob was the person who really popularized the, oh, just send nine people card on last and you'll get it in. Because teams don't watch it as closely as they should. That was a long time ago, but it's kind of, you can still see the echoes of it. And it felt like when... You saw Squirtier 
hold them for eight minutes. That was because they just kept sending nine people tracks and Squirt, you figured out how to deal with it. And on that very last push, it was finally because they sent people to all the different levels that you can play on, including up top to come in and post and win. And they finally learned that lesson and it's working out for them. As Birdo gets domed right as the gates open. And he wrecked like bookmarked by his own pyro, so that's pretty funny, but... Yeah, six minutes for Rib. Season ends in six minutes if you cannot get this one across the finish line. So we'll see if they have what it takes. Lori now, finds Lenny. Yeah, Cypher Pick is big. as you can get. We gotta watch the house squad. It's a soldier fight going on. One by blank. That's gonna be big in the long run because it means they're gonna recontest onto cart. When you only have six minutes on the clock, this ten seconds stalled on you on first matters a lot more. So we'll see if they can get any people to deal with this uh, house squad. Right now it's fish and blank. And they get shot killed as well. Lenny's swinging out wide defending these players, so it's looking like a solid first setup here for Witness. Jay-Z got caught out with that knife melted going around. Yeah, here comes the card sack. They did get it up the first ramp, and they're gonna find fish. Lenny on card eats the rapid Like it's full pack. Blank full pack jumping onto Mako. Doesn't hit the air shot, but Mako gonna rebomb onto him. This soldier fight is super important. Oh, GG gonna give his life for it, but it's fine. Mako, yeah. Jay-Z finds him, sniffs him out, but Blue getting kills elsewhere in the front of top. Well, this card is still not moving. Yeah, six so people, five people died for that. That close. Yeah, five people dying for it. Birdo snipes! That's such a huge pick from Lenny. Scout can't 2 that card. Another one from Lenny! He just wants to win Grand Finals right now. Are we paused? Yeah, this has to be attack, right? <sighs> you gotta imagine. I mean, Dolphin's not here to give us the updates, but... Attack or attack? I mean, uh, I guess we're gonna have. Oh, it's oh. a tech pause. Okay, DC from Jay Z, run it back spy. Can only hope that at this point in real time they're got second already. <laughs> you gotta hope. Ninety seconds, one shot. I mean, yeah, you would have to hope if you're a fan of the series going on to upward, but which we are. Yeah. <laughs> That said, Witness Gaming, putting on a clinic on this first defense. They contested uh, Cart perfectly with as many people as they can. Lenny has been hitting every shot he needs to to defend the players on the house. Even when they lost their soldier just now, it costs like three players to get him out of there finally. Three players and time off the Cart, which is arguably more important. Just because it, it's already been, I mean, it was just over a minute. I think we were at 453, 450 when the game paused. And the cart still has a little bit of way to go until first gets capped. There's still a level one unbuilt, you know. This is not going to come instantly. Lenny is uh, Lenny and Flu are both still up in the house. Yeah, and speaking of Lenny and Flu, scoreboard check for all of you wondering. Lenny first, 46 oh, points. Boss. 47 points. He will die. Lenny dies instantly. <laughs> <laughs> first the, 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 Ubering, the first Uber! But it's not in the river, though. It's over the bridge. They're going to exchange here. It's worse, though, for them. For Rib, they, they're losing as many players on the post more than they need, they, they can afford to. Ball over the top Pablo, of Mori. Pa Pablo catches out Foxy too, yeah. even. So they're it's gonna rough. lose their med. Birdo gonna get Card a little bit closer and wins the one v one against Pablo. But the entire cavalry coming out of Tuttle. That said, Poseidon lands the shot. Lenny is the Mellon. furthest forward person here. He's killing Birdo again. I think he's yeah, killed Birdo four Flu's times. in the house that entire time. Yeah, Still and he's there. gonna be there. He's gonna get a ton of damage onto Chalk, and he goes down before even touching it. Blank soars out, lands in the water. There is oh, that source yeah. engine game knowledge. As Jay Easy though finds Blake in the entrance to tunnel, gonna get exiled next. How? Yeah, finally the kills are rolling in for run it back, but this is coming 30 seconds too late, if not a minute too late. 336. That was a 220 first cap. That's a minute too late. Yeah, I mean the one, the good news is they have a 50% ad. They. This is theoretically possible. They need to hard to one shot. all this. And Lenny taking uh, up Poseidon, not going to be good news. Chalk is in flank, though. They have control of apartments. They get fish as well. Bomb over the top from blank, doing a lot of work to stifle these players. He will go down, though. Two kills from Chalk. It's going to be Pablo going for the cleanup. He's dead. All of a sudden, three bled from Witness. If they can get away, get around Lenny here, this could be the snowball. Yeah, that's much easier said than done, though. No spy, nowhere to even get him. But Morty, the lock and load! The savior we... The, that we... What's the line that we didn't deserve, but the one we needed? That's gonna be Hyphen burning out in spawn. They're gonna find Fluoris in the tracks as well. Fish decloaking up on cart, gonna be sniffed out, taken down. And the 
frantic push is on. Just under three minutes for three points. Foxy with Ad Blake coming they have up on Ad, They need to go in now. If Blake gets this set, this Uber set up, they had showed no idea of how to break this before. They have Ad. They're gonna go for it. They need kills here. Anything would work. They're not gonna find anything. They just Edwin's need time. The shutter. That's all they need. But pop they back out from the other shutter. They get Pablo and Blake. Gigi gonna go down. Mori surfs out. Trapped in the lower. Gonna go down. No cart time coming in. Chalk. chalk in the window. Gonna get some good damage on Arrows the Arrows are huge. In. in comes in Mako. One rocket takes out Flu. With oh, the cart so many still kills not coming yet trapped. In. And we're down to two minutes here. Things are getting dicey. They're gonna need to do something fast. And Lenny finds Foxy. Going for the greedy cross. Easy caught out as well. No one to cap the cart. And things are not looking good. If you're running back here, just get players back as fast as possible. Sack to get this tap, close off that spawn shard. You need anything here, but Mori went alone. He's cleaned up by Fish's revolver. Leaf dead as well. Birdo on the shutter. Bombed on top of by the cow mangler. He's dead. Cart's gonna roll back in five seconds. If that happens, the game is over. I think uh Jay Easy coming up through tracks, gonna get his dead ringer pop, but goes down before he can even decloak. That's going to be Chalk finding a kill onto Lenny, but we are in garbage time. This is going to be it. Just t stat padding time right now. A lot of people on uh, the people on Rip not even bothering to leave spawn. Papa Fish comes in and say there, as they say it in chat, saves Witness Gaming season, and they will be your season 17 as the, the ham Uber on Flu Walrus coming into second. This will be will be your season 17 invite grand champions back to back rib made it a close one, but Witness Gaming will take home the dub. They made it a close one last week. This time it was domination. Witness Gaming clean sweeping it 401 Asheville, 201 Swiftwater, deserving champions once again. They showed as much weakness, if not more weakness, than any invite first seed we've ever seen coming into playoffs. And they ramped up beautifully <laughs> over the course of the season, over the course of the postseason, rather. Yeah, I mean, they, they really have been forged trial by fire on Swiftwater right now. I mean, unfortunate that, you know, it ends kind of like this with just a bunch of garbage time left, but, you know, they deserve the time to pad their stats. They've been through a lot of it. This is a team that we saw look shaky in the regular season, you know, lose that half on product to help in week one that... Know, needs a video essay done, a summoning salt video, something on that of how that happened. And they've just gradually improved, gotten better, really shored up all of their weaknesses. And this is a team that, you know, really is deserving of the title of Invite Champions. Yeah, and on the on the topic of run it back, they really had a chance this season to do the unthinkable and win, you know, stop the two peat. The, they played so well in the upper bracket finals. You, you had the feeling they were peaking at that moment, like Grands was going to be, you know, theirs for the taking, not able to get over the line, and then just running out of gas at the end. It's such a respectable season, but they're going to feel crushed that it was so close. They were so close to being the champions. But and I mean, really, yeah, at this point, you think you just gave them too much time to adapt, as it looks like we're getting, uh, we're getting people in for an interview. I can see them lining up in the mumble right now. But yeah, this will go well, I'm sure. You, you just got to look back <laughs> to that Prut, right, last week? Because that that would have been it. It was 2-4, they made it close, just needed a little bit more, you know, I don't know what, energy, power, lock and load directs to pull that one through. <laughs> lock, yeah, needed but more lock and load, that's what feels we feels like coming into this one, uh, yeah, I think we are ready for the interview, though, so uh, open the gates, underscore, bring them in. We have blank... Blake, Exile, Pablo, and Fish. Fellas, welcome in. Congrats on the dub. We won. What's up, guys? Yo, Yo good win. Yeah, first thing I want to ask you guys is, you had a hard-fought season, you know, lost in those upper bracket finals, and Grand's round one was a three-mapper that, honestly, while you won 4-2 on Prout, had a couple shaky rounds. How'd you guys make tonight so dominant? It was a clean sweep. Honestly, um... I think our team kind of reformed like as well. Like we actually started playing the season like as a team into playoffs. And I think we made a lot of good changes as a team. And honestly, Rib played super well in upper bracket, but I think we had a really good like comeback this season. We were like showing a lot of weaknesses in the reg season, but we really did come back and we reviewed as a team. We, you know, we, we hung out more mumble, you know, like as team team chemistry built. And yeah, we just had a great here a great playoffs run, honestly. 
I want to ask about Swiftwater because, I mean, you guys play at Rib on it four times this season. That's the max you can theoretically do against the team. And first time in the regular season, it was fine. But then things started kind of getting worse in playoffs. Squirt Ye picked it against you guys, too. You know, it, it kind of feels like it, to me at least, it mirrors the arc of the team. You know, where it's almost like a, a measurement of your performance. And is is there some truth to the statement that you guys just gradually got better and better at Swiftwater as it kept getting picked into you guys? Oh, yeah. Definitely. And I think that, like, kind of finding some stability in this last week was important, too. Because, like, um, the week of Swift, they had Evil playing in the regular season. And then first week of playoffs, they had, or like the upper bracket against Rib, they had Joe playing. And then against Swirgia, they had Jacob playing. And then against Rib last week and this week, they had me playing. So it was like shaky, but I thought that last week when I played, I was like, okay, we definitely can win this Swift. And I was just kind of getting used to this team and how to call for this team and, and how we want to play it. And like the more we played it, we, I, we just like got more comfortable on it. And it kind of just like snowballed into us being really dominant on it and yeah. the form that we should be in. I, I want to, think... sorry, I, go, I don't mean to ahead. cut you off, but I want to capitalize on that real quick because I, 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 I want you guys to explain maybe just for the sake of the viewers, just how big having your spy in position can be, right? Because I know that like when I was in lower divs, you know, you, you're, you're not used to spies calming as much as they do an invite. And, you know, I think for some people you might say, oh, well, it's just a spy, right? Like, how can one spy make that much difference? But what what kind of goes into that, right? In terms of the calling, in terms of, you know, the syncing up on pushes. And I mean, I guess mainly at Fish, but I guess for the rest of the team too, because it really impacts everyone. I think Exile can comment on this because we've played together for a long time. But like, my style, I've kind of like molded my style like from Jacob and by how he played because I thought like spy is probably the most influential class on this game that goes completely unnoticed on a cast. So it's things that you don't see on a cast, but when you can see so much of the map and you can see so like so many different sets of players going into different positions, you can delegate different roles to different players, like having my soldier bomb this player at this time and having uh, my demo take an exchange into them when he would have just otherwise waited for them to use into us because maybe we can catch the sniper with it. Or like those little things and just overall coordination in general really like completely changed the game. I think to play at the highest level and to like to be that dominant, you need that to find consistency or else um, you're just kind of flipping a coin every time. Yeah, I think with having like strong main callers on a team, like everything doesn't have to go completely scripted as, you know, as a play by play would go, you know, like stuff you'd work on as a team. Some things can just be coin flipped with good main callers calling kind of certain advantages or certain player picks that we get in a team fight. And those types of things that we do in those team fights will honestly just like make each fight so one sided after after the like the Uber ends or something or just like a you know general just like drive fight or something. So having fish on the team really welcomed the idea for me to call more aggressively and having someone to support me off of like certain calls I make. And I think our whole team really appreciated those type that type of kind of chemistry and cohesion when it comes to calls. And I think most teams should try to strive for those types of calls as well. It's never really just one person's job to call everything for your team. It's going to be like multiple people kind of making strong calls from like a different perspective or a point of view and everyone can play off those. So yeah, it's really good that I got to play fish again in the season that, um, you know, being my first win ever in grants, it's, it's a nice, it's a nice change of pace, honestly. Is it your first grand finals win in Highlander? So this, this marks my first actual first grands win in Highlander. The Vlad winner, right? Yeah. Like I've played grand finals where I've played in for teams like, um, I think I played with Pablo for a season where we won. Yep. I played with another team, I think, where I won Grands, or it got pretty close. But mo the closest I've ever gotten as a main relative to like maining and winning a Grands was on MCM, I think, where we had a bracket reset for Grands. And then season 14 was my second closest with uh, Fast Forth. Shout out to Fast Forth as well, everyone in chat rooting us on. Um, that was probably the second closest, but it it's been like eight or nine years of playing competitively i've never won a grands ever so this is my first one and i'm happy about it honestly i felt like i played well this season but i could have played better but you know lock and is op so i used it <laughs> ban lock and load by the way yeah <laughs> definitely yeah, your fair share of the lock and load highlights i want to direct this question next question at blank and pablo because uh for the most part of the season especially after you guys lost the double stopwatch in winners finals we kind of had you guys pegged as more of a cough centric team where we knew you had the ability to just have players frag out dm show their muscle and get tons of kills 
And aside from Lenny, it feel, felt like Blank and Pablo were at the very center of that, where you two had so much game impact on Koth throughout the season. How has it been coming into this team and trying to, you know, make your own game impact, especially when you've had inconsistencies in the calling? Uh, for me specifically, it was extremely hard uh, with, like, changing the spies. Because every spy plays their own way and wants their soldier to play their own way for the most part. Uh, my class became way easier when like Jacob and Fish came in. It was way simple just to like listen to, oh, there's these players certain here. The pyro's not here, so you can bomb this for completely free, and and it's right. Uh, personally, I struggle with what I call invisible bombing and shit, where I just bomb into the unknown and hope something goes right, and it normally doesn't. It's way easier with like people like Fish and Jacob. Yeah, dude, having these two like hood spy callers in Highlander is such a such a blessing, honestly. Like having two players like Jacob and Fish who just have such a great insight on the game makes it seem so seamless in the plays we do and everything just works out in the end. Like I know personally for me as a man caller for so long, I've made some bad calls. I've made some game winning calls, but like when I'm playing with a spy like Jacob or Fish, it really just welcomes like a chance for me to kind of sit back and make the standard calls any dem would make and just work on my DM, you know micro my players that i need in my combo to play with me so i can perform better you know play around my sniper my medic and my pyro and stuff like that even my heavy and i think like just if you guys have a chance to watch spies like fish and jacob and how they call and their calling style that should be any spies that kind of strive like to uh improve is like become one of those crucial callers like on your team because spies kind of just have like basically uav of the whole map so you have like a free free like, kind of free wall cheats in the, in the actual scrims and matches and stuff I want to ask you again, Exile, and maybe more just on behalf of all the invite demos, because we've seen the lock and load so much, right? And I, I have to yeah. comment on it, because it hasn't been changed in a number of years. What was it, I guess, in this season that really made it, you know, come come into the meta? Because theoretically, we could have been doing this for years at this point, right? Yeah, I mean, if you look at the weapon, it hasn't really changed, you're right. Um, I don't know... Boring. Yeah, Mori, Mori actually, yeah, shout out to Mori. Mori actually gave us a lot of like struggle dealing with the weapon. And even last season on Rib, when I actually played with Rib last season, Mori would use the weapon. I would be impressed when he would just randomly pipe the whole server like by himself. Um, but to answer your question, I think the reason why the lock and load became more of a meta choice in terms of both game modes, honestly, is just how fast paced teams seem to be getting and playing off of small advantages like, oh, we're already buffed, let's start pushing, you know, or we have like players already fighting if i walk in and hit a pipe on things we'll win the fight adding on to that it's what i just said once a demo just hits a random pipe on the medic or the demo or like the sniper or just a low class in general that just opens up so much like reminding i'm reminding myself right now of our pro our product match last week most of the game i was just spamming locking loads and every fight we took where i hit a pipe we usually won so that's a kind of good like way of showing showcasing how strong the weapon can be on a player who can kind of abuse it like me and Mori could like me and Mori could use it really well i think dt used it last season i'm not too sure i don't know if fish could back check me on that but the lock and load is just, just way too powerful for it if you're playing like against fast paced teams you can definitely just like break their break their momentum by using it so it, that that's why it's pretty strong a lock and load pipe pretty easy to reflect uh, uh iron bomber pipe pretty easy to reflect lock and load pyro's gonna have a fucking hard job like you're gonna always hit the first reflect maybe but the second one that's a toss-up it's not even 50 50. Honestly, Lock and Load has a higher chance of hitting than getting reflected, anyways, it right? Needs to be so, banned. Yeah, I think I think after tonight, there should be some sort of pull made. Or just it's even too just, easy. It's, it's just, just too free, easy to use. Yeah, like, <laughs> like we were talking about in playoffs. Like, once I entered playoffs, I just decided I'm going to use it. And it really <laughs> just changed the way I played the game. It was too free. Like, you know, I bounced between demo and scout, but I just come on back the, to demo, use that weapon, it's free. So on the on the on the Swift while we were setting up, I was like. I was like, Exile, like you have not like been playing the game, like using this lock and load. You're just like sitting back yeah. and just like playing turret demo. And he's like, Bro, I haven't played the game like since playoffs have started. Yeah. Like <laughs> regular season, I was kind of just launching for scrims. I quit the lock and load and people were like, Exile, we thought you were better than that. I'm like, you know what? The dub's the dub. You gotta get up, use the weapon to win the game. So I use it and you know, there, there it goes. We won the number one because of it. <laughs> <laughs> Got a free bracket reset using it, I guess. So yeah, I mean, it ended up being lock and load demo versus lock and load demo in the grand finals, so that's a bit yeah. of evidence for the strength of that weapon. But I want to direct a question at uh, Blake real quick because we've talked about you know lock and load exploding people, 
the game's undergone a meta shift where teams are playing super aggressively. How fun has the season been to play as a medic with all these new things jumping at you, with spies playing to just kind of body block you on your retreats while a soldier lands on your head? What's what's been the season been like for you from the medic perspective? Uh, uh, the game's been like I don't know, pretty fun. I enjoy playing the game. I don't have a lot of passion to like win as was I like, used to. I just kind of like launch the game for scrims and matches and then as soon as they're done I kind of like forget about it for a little bit but yeah the lock and load has made it uh, I think like the, the the quick arrows have become really important with the lock being in the meta because like if I don't immediately arrow someone after they take the first pipe they're probably dead just to, like I think a lot of people don't even think about this but if you notice the way the lock and load like hits you it knocks you up in the air. It doesn't knock you away. So it just kind of like bounces you up. It makes that like second pipe even more deadly. And then just from like medic in general, like getting piped from across the map and then having to be like 40 HP, like 50 HP, taking an actual fight after that just becomes very scary. I, I want to like, I'm going to shout out JEZ. That, that dude's a monster with the revolver. Like, that guy made me, like, any time I was low, I was just literally spinning around looking for him. So that that, that playstyle of, like, where the spy just shows up, after, like, I think it works so well with the lock and load. Like, my team did a great job chimping Jay-Z and just, like, making it really hard for him to get in. Uh, but yeah, the, the way the game's played right now with the, how fast it is, you kind of just have to ignore your HP as medic, which I think I personally enjoy. Uh, but I normally just play like max beam distance. I always talk about it like my mentees notice like I talk about beam distance a lot. I think with the lock and load and just all the like quick bombs that people do, if you have great beam distance, you're kind of like safer than you otherwise would. It's not really taking the same spam and you're kind of like curving the beam a little bit to make it a little easier on yourself. But yeah, this this has been uh, it's been fun. The lock and load should be banned 100 percent in my opinion. And that's it. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, get that get that item out, bro. <laughs> I feel oh, like sure. I only started using just because I was playing against Mori or something. It, it was it was more it's perpetually just like getting worse and worse for me to do it, so I had to do it against other people. So you know, you can't beat them, join them, as they say. Yeah, that's that's how this thing goes. Yeah, but I feel like nice. we're gonna. I feel like if it gets banned, it's gonna be because there's a ton of invite feedback doing it, and then you're gonna have eighty percent of the players in lower divs being like, "What? We ban the lock and load?" And every season, it's gonna be unban the lock and yeah. load again. I never, I never saw this thing used. Yeah, probably. I mean, I, I think invite yeah. feedback is obviously very, very important, and lower yeah. feedback is is important too. But I think it's crucial for top play that we talk about what we need banned. Play it's important for us because people look at our our matches and our pause. And we use what's good, so, you know, it's, it's important we so, so One of the most ridiculous things, like, we're setting up on defense in the second half. I think that we were on defense, or maybe in the first half. I don't know. We're setting up on defense, and Exile's like, yeah, the lock and load has, like, really good spam angles on our gun. And he's like, where are their spam angles? And, like, I think Exile and I both said that it's, like, it's literally everywhere. Like, <laughs> like when you're holding first forward on Swift, I think that's, like... Like, I feel bad because Lenny died a bunch of times when we were doing that, but like I can't be out. Whereas like normally I'd love to be out of the tunnel and just like playing that space. But there's just a random pipe that could just show up and I'm dead. So it, it's it's quite ridiculous how fast it is. That's yeah, crazy. Super easy to use. And I, I'm not like a demo who plays on like lower ping either. I play on like 70 ping on demo. I'm from the West Coast. And I've always thought, well, it's like a five ping weapon. You know, you gotta have low ping for his scan. But no, anyone can use it. <laughs> anyone, even on high ping, it's fine. It's just the angles that matter. If you know the angles, it just works. So, yeah. I mean, even on Koth, I know you hit a. We I mean, were going over crazy. You hit a fadeaway pipe on Foxy Shutter to Shutter that were like that. Yeah, that's, that's, that's evil. Oh, that's awesome, evil, man. Yeah. Oh, was that called on stream? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> speaking of speaking of Blake, what was the what was the reaction when you just won the Med v Med right coming out of actual Med? <laughs> on one of those oh, that's a. Uh, I I feel like I, that was taught to me by Bowl Bowl of Mayo. Shout out Bowl. Uh, the big thing that he would always talk about is like if people are taking damage in their shutter and like he's full health or like he's not taking immediate damage, I always shoot that arrow because of him. So it's more just like I'm just spamming it. Usually I'm looking for their sniper, 
like if i'm honest like that was just ha happened to hit foxy i did hear that foxy was hurt but i'm normally just shooting that arrow at their sniper because i mean wh what else are you going to do on Asheville mid as medic like you're going to blow up eventually might as well just get some damage in <laughs> i like that maximizing damage output you could heal like 30 health or deal 70 damage it's an yeah, exactly choice. exactly or you could miss the arrow on your demo and then you just sit there and you're like what just happened and then when Exile dies, you still blame it on him. Exactly. I know the I know exactly. the play. I know the play. Yeah, it's it's a, it's pretty concurrent that you blame Exile for anything. So that's it's it's fine. Yeah. I've, if I've Exile dies, that. without <laughs> getting healed, you just go, "Wow, Exile, really? Yeah, really, you know, dude." Every season I've ever played, I kind of just play to perma feed and do six thousand DPM and take all the heat for my team to kind of soar soar past me. So. You know, I, I don't mind being the punching bag of the century, so it's okay. It's fun. That's no, okay. It we play fun. that one up on stream sometimes too. Don't worry. Yeah, yeah. I think the the good strat is shoot exile, and you'll probably win. And that's like grand every season. It's just shoot me, yeah. and then like or whoever my sniper is. So it's probably like a good sniper, and then demo. So. <laughs> and well, there we go. We've talked at length about the lock and load and its impact here, but I just want to open the floor for anyone who wants to give you closing thoughts on the season. Any shout outs you want to give? Um, I want to shout out a lot of my close friends on Rib, you know, Mako, Leaf, uh, Mori, you know, Birdo, Poseidon, you know, so many good players, all of them basically, but they, they did a hell of a fight, you know, uh, across this last three weeks, upper bracket, grand finals won, this grand finals, you know, it might have looked like dominant today, but that's just us getting better, you know, they, they still played really well, um, shout outs to Mujet and the rest of uh, the fast forward group from seasons past ether to toy and um lastly before i go i just want to say you know uh, i think def joe and i gave uh, rib sweep two different meanings okay so <laughs> gg's only oh gg's only God. shout out to lenny shout out leonard that, shout that out to guy, shot away as well yeah, that guy can away. still cheat Shot away comes <laughs> like back. He'll be the best player. Shout out to Shot away. Yeah, uh, he's still pretty good. He actually is. He played on our pug stream, and he was like actually pretty good. I mean, if he ever came back, like God, he'd be insane. Like the last time I played with Shot away was a Grape Squad Highlander back when yeah. uh, Vigil was still. Uh, you know, he was, was still playing, there. You know, he was playing advanced this season, right? On Engineer. Yeah, yeah he we, played yeah. on G League. We don't want to. <laughs> the G League. Don't, no, don't need to speak more about that. Yeah, shout out G League. Leave, shout, shout out to out G League. League. Yeah, Everyone on the G League. We were trying to post some G League players, you know, low key. I mean, yeah, we tried to. A lot of talent to. on there, but it failed. Yeah, they, they didn't want to give up on the G League season. Shout I have like to a, the silly raid. Yeah, yeah, I have a good amount of shout outs raid. after we're all finished, if that's fine. Because, you know, it's being my first grand, I want to say. <laughs> shout out Flu Walrus, you know, for his first grand. Shout out Flu. Yeah, shout first out Flu he, he stepped it up as well. He played great, man. On he played amazing he played, today. He was very he impressive on Heavy. His, good. like, development. Also, I think another thing, I think Blank. Got so much better at soldiers. Oh yeah, dude. On. Good Blank, job, you're like Blank. the best multi-class right now, like, actually. I want to see you play like a sniper Soon. season one day. Soon, perhaps. Yeah. Not next uh, season. Um. So if I can, I'll take the floor for this. Uh, not really too long. So obviously, shout out to the fast fourth people. Um, you know, season fourteen was one of the great greatest seasons the Highlander ever played. Um, just, unfortunately, we didn't win that season, but it was one of the most emotionally fought battles I've ever had. Shout out to MCM, like Watterson, Evil, uh, Yip Yep or Aaron. Um, oh, shout out to my friends in Gup. Uh, they know who they are if they're listening. Uh, shout out to the people in Wump Discord, all my, all my friends, all my boys in there. Uh, shout out to Black Swan. Shout out to the casters and shout out to RGL. Thanks for the amazing cast today. No problem. With that said, the rest of the team members for Winners Gaming will start filing out. So, with XL, the last one remaining, finally winning his first TF2 title. Yeah. So well deserved, long time coming. Season 17 comes to a close. Witness Gaming, you're back to back champions. So, once again, congratulations, XL, and to the whole team as well. XL, you want to take us out? Uh, Yeah, sure. Um, just Put to get kind of closer. Yeah. Yeah. Um, thanks for watching. Uh, Season 17 Invite Grand Finals. We had Alto, Dr. Underscore, and Zagron as your casters in production. Um, I'm XL as your player to watch in the Grands, and I'm glad everyone got to watch. I had a, hope you guys had a good experience watching. And uh, thank you guys all, and good night. 3P next season? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> good night, everybody. Good night. Good night, everyone.